Hello and welcome to Super Chat Catch Up for episode 256 of EFAB. We are here. We're gonna we're here. check out your massages and we're going to see what they're all about and maybe have a Send chat. Send us all your massages. Yeah. So we're gonna just we're gonna start we're gonna start straight away. Gonna look at whoever sent the first thing in, see what it is, and just what insight do they bring to this recording today? So this one says, Hey Mola, you might not know me, but I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I think you should stream a Mario oh. RPG. Um Gay actor Michael Douglas. That's an interesting uh, that's an interesting thought. He's always talking about Mario RPG, Michael Douglas, in all of his gay videos. It makes a lot of sense that he would super chat this. And I just, you know, I I didn't really like Mario RPG that much. I'm gonna be honest with you. I um the was weirdest that the thing. One the, Game Boy? the Game Boy Sorry. ones? No, no, no. This was the SNES one. Uh, I think Square made it, um, and they did a remake recently. And yeah, it didn't it didn't grab me uh, so very much. So I'm hoping that uh, Thousand Year Door will be the one that uh, hooks me in. It is. I mean, solid. it's a good thing that they branched out and tried something new and different with Mario. Well, so tried something new that, thirty yeah. years ago. This this is a thirty year old game that got remade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it was recent, cosmically speaking. Yes, I suppose yeah. so. I uh I was playing it and I was like this is really cool and I even appreciate all the things that were happening in it. I was like wow this is just wacky and wild. You just, this isn't even close to what Mario does these days in terms of some of the designs of things and how things were playing out. But I already felt um correct me if I'm wrong, but there's like was there two difficulty modes and you had, you can't even access normal or whatever you have to play. Wow. On? The thing is is that uh if if it's a question of difficulty the game does get harder. Um. The, the longer it goes on to a degree that it might get more interesting for you. Well, I hadn't even gotten to that yet. I was asking what difficulties were available. Oh, yeah, that was like classic and then a new mode. Yeah, well, in any case, the one that you have to choose, because I guess you unlock a harder one once you've completed it, meant that, like, I was, I was already like, well, this is the opening level, so me killing everything in one hit and them doing barely anything to me, I guess that's just whatever. And then they're like, oh, also, if you hit A on hit, you'll do, like, triple damage. And I was like, damn, I'm already fucking near insta-killing them. I don't think I need triple damage. And then it was like, oh, and sometimes they drop a full heal when they're killed. I was like, I mean, <laughs> sure, I guess. And then it was like, also, you've unlocked special moves that do even more damage. You could press A on those to do triple of that. And I was like, holy shit. I'm just, uh, at this point, just sort of waiting for developments because I don't have to think at all about any of the mechanics. Um... Maybe secrets I'd have to think a little bit, but yeah, I just found myself, I played it I think for like three, four hours and I got kind of bored and just no desire to continue it. I think it might have been uh, something that I'd have a different perspective on had I played it when I was super young and knew what was ahead sort of thing. Um, but sort of the lack, the, the and I'm not just saying lack of challenges, like, you know, it's like, oh, well, it's a Nintendo game. A lot of them start easier. But like, no, I, I mean, I've played a lot of Nintendo games and I love them. I, uh, you know, Mario Sunshine is harder and it's like opening levels than this by far. I just, uh, I didn't get gripped in and perhaps uh, I needed to play it for a couple more hours and maybe I would, but I was kind of just shocked. And it was funny because my sister plays almost everything Nintendo and I was curious to just, uh, she, she visited and I was like, okay, why don't you play it? And I was curious just how she would take it. And she did eventually say like when, uh, you know, when, when does, when do different things happen? And I was like, yeah, you just gotta keep going or keep moving because there was nothing notable about the gameplay for a long time because it's just incredibly straightforward but I wonder if the fact that I don't have a historical context for the game is uh, making it so that it doesn't have as much of an effect on me it is very much an old school turn based RPG that's not the I issue think it's decently long. I think it's a decently long game as well so maybe there's the whole how, how long does it take for the difficulty curve to kind of ramp up yeah because turn based i like a lot yeah likewise um like i said i'm uh it, yeah it just wasn't doing it for me but hopefully thousand year door because that's the one that i always hear really 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 good things about and i haven't played it yet mm -hmm. and they are re-releasing that i think in the next couple of months so uh yeah that's what i'm looking forward to now i feel like games being way too easy is certainly more of a death sentence than games being like overly difficult. 
Uh, how often is it the case mm. that you encounter a game that's too hard, you know? Very like rarely. Um, but games that are too easy, like, I think... It just uh, it depends on what too easy we're talking about, right? Like if yeah, I th I think so. I know that with um, I, I play a lot of Risk of Rain too, and that game, depending on the modifiers you select and the way that you play, can be difficult or it can be incredibly easy. So either way, it becomes very boring to play. Um, hmm. So you got to find that that challenge. Or allow or build a game that allows players to challenge themselves, you know, make their own challenges or customize difficulty, things of that nature. Yes. That goes a long way. It's the kind of thing I really appreciate in a game. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the mockumentary The Bay. Scary and gruesome. Good flick. I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. The Bay? Never heard of it, I don't think. I've never heard of it either. Sounds of interest. Remember when they made Coco the gorilla cry by telling her that Robin Williams died? Why did she need to know that? Lol, those jerks. Is that a thing? I have no clue. I don't know much about Coco. I don't even know if they had an efficient way to translate that, like, definitively. You know, in a, you know like, a, I wonder if that's fully understood, but yeah, that that's, uh, sounds upsetting. I'm surprised Fringy said nothing about that. I, I, I don't even understand what's being said. I don't understand how anything could be communicated. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't understand. I'm confused. In Massachusetts, a showcase cinemas screened Saw 7 accidentally instead of Megamind, scaring its young audience. I heard about this, yeah. That's, um... To be clear, really? if you're in that audience really and you didn't take your kids out of the theater when you were clearly being given the wrong movie, then that's on you, man. I guess. It only takes like five minutes to figure out that you're watching a Saw movie. There yeah, should, yeah, there, there would have to be, there would have to be parents in there, at least yeah, some, is... and then those parents should be like, whoa, 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 like someone stop, 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 stop. This is fucking Saw. Like the title credits would have come up at least at some yeah, point. Yeah, this one's, this one's on the parents. It's their fault. I mean, can we put one percent on the theater? Oh yeah, like it, it's it's a little bit their fault for showing the wrong movie, yeah. But you have plenty of time to, you know. They need a guy in the room up leave. top who's watching the whole movie too. But I guess he gets bored eventually. It's like, oh, I assume what happened was he just put he thought it was the correct mm -hmm. movie when he put it in, and uh, he just you know played it. And I don't think there's any way for the normal people to talk with the sky god up there in the booth, so. In the Saw 7 commentary, the writers say that the two pigmen with Gordon were Brad and Ryan from the opening trap. This proves Saren is a traitor. Wait, who's Saren? Saren is a traitor. He betrayed the council. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that never went anywhere, unfortunately, because Saw 7 is the end of that that uh, story, so to speak. Anywhere. That's Saw. Yeah, but stories don't go anywhere. Go what? Anywhere. No. Saw is known for stories always going places, but that's where it ended. That's where the, the story was moving and moving, and people die, and people betray, and it's, it's revealed that, you know, John, Joe, Bill, and Jane were all behind all the puzzles all the time, and it would have been really good if they carried on, but they didn't have the balls. Dang. We had a weird prequel, and then, like, a almost reboot, and now we're back to where they should have been. No, I don't yeah, and they made one of the best ones, and so now we'll see what yeah. they do with Eleven. Uh, I'm Cinderella gay. Only gay till midnight. Okay. That's nice. Alright. Nelson Mandela, more like Nelson Bangs Fellas. Dang. Got him. Uh, why did Captain Porkins scream, I'm alright? Was he? He wasn't, no. He just wanted his team to understand that he was going to take care of the problem, but even he didn't realize what he was dealing with. And, uh, well, he was not alright. No, and down he, he went. blew up. Each of you please do an impression of Ben... Ben Quadrin... Quadrinaros? Banging on his console during the pod race? Ooh, meet the water! <laughs> oh, I'd have to see it again. I'd, yeah, I, so I, I'd, yeah. I'd have to see it. I don't know how to... Yeah, I don't have a memory of the guy to... 
Well, I bet if I saw it, I'd be I, like, oh yeah, I that guess. Guy, but so if you want to just now, guess, just... whatever he because I, I don't know either. I, I have no idea what to even. I would just be making random noises. Well, you've got the the quote, so remember. do whatever you want. You got complete freedom. You're an actor. Oh, right there in the chat. Oh, I see. I see. Where he he he's like, oh, he's upset. He goes, oh, mito wata. Yeah, okay. I mean, I guess I'm just gonna go the same direction as you two. Oh, mito wata. I, th I feel like we could be installed. Yes, we, we could. Well, yeah, probably, we could. yeah. Could you imagine that you could, yeah. we could just be in the background? You could, you could, I could see it right now. You just on Coruscant, and there's a bunch of people, and then there's us three just, just walking on through. Lord! Planet and, and do my thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord Longbong of Mibslington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong Fab? Of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less Ooh, going on? That's a good idea. It'd be a movie fab for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Greet you oh, from hello. Good Boy. Thank you very much. That's very kind. I would yeah, say... I think that's a good idea. Practically a guarantee, I would say, when there's less going on. There's just so much going on, you know? A lot of the time, there's a lot we, of things going on. We do keep busy. Uh, Carlos from Soul X is a warrior MVP. All right, remind me which one Carlos was. Was he the uh, guy who was he the guy who had the really the one where he had to cut off part of his brain? If that was him, then yeah, he's an MVP in the sense that that was so unfair. He that's yeah. just so they even, fell uh, into the saw trap. They the the saw movie thing again. They did it, unfortunately. That's the thing that they, they corrected crazy a couple of things. They did some things that we were asking for for a long time, but then they also just did the stupid shit too. Nobody wants to see a guy go through that amount of shit, do everything by the rules, and then be like, yeah, but you ran out of time. Remember, it was like sizzling, and you had to just wait. That's so unfair, and it's the same for the girls. Well, you just was, had to wait. Was, yeah, that was so. It's just like it seems as though you've accomplished the task, you win. Not, oh well, shit. I mean, we'll give you a false sense of hope, even though it just pure physics and and what's happening right now means that you can't win, even though you've already done the hardest part. Now yeah, you're and, just waiting. And as we talked about, um, Jigsaw, like if you're actually trying to test their zeal, you really think that it makes for an entirely different person if they did it with one or two seconds to spare, or not? Cutting out their brain? Do you really think there's that much of a difference of the places people are willing to go to prove they want to survive, when one of them does it in under a minute, or one of them does it in a minute and a second? Like, that's just so silly. It was already yeah. insane. This movie just needs to work a lot harder to get me to even, like, think that the Saw guy is in any way, <laughs> like, has anything going on, really. Yeah, he, has, just, he has a card they, rags. He has a, uh... Honestly, yeah, though, they did better this time for that. Guys. The people he was doing oh, this to, it was like, ones, oof, yeah. yeah. These these are horrible Some monsters. Some of the other ones were actually doomed. They just, like, were screwed. There was nothing that they could do. Oh, yeah, I wasn't saying that. I was saying the people he chose, like, they they were literally, like, moving through the world, promising oh, people yeah, that they could yeah. save their lives and then taking their money. It's some of the most fucked up shit. Yeah. Fuck them. Compared, yeah. To, uh, compared to where it's just like, oh, oh you, you smoked, smoked a too cigarette. Much. Yeah. <laughs> so here you go. go On a trap rigged against somebody who has very healthy lungs. Uh, please tell me YMS and EFAP still on good terms. Uh, they got a little crying face. I thought the beef was squashed. No YMS for Soul X EFAP movies. Well, uh, we were totally on board with him being there, but he didn't want to be. Um, I think it might have been a scheduling thing. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I can I promise that anyone will appear in future. I can't even promise that I will appear in future. You never know what'll happen. Yeah, but um, you know, you're a really nice guy, Muller. <laughs> sheep jumps through your window and starts attacking. Exactly. What no. am I to do if that happens? Stop! I got to do EFAP. Ah, no, I don't. That's a real anybody. possibility. He lives in Wales. There's more sheep per capita than, than people. people. Uh, yes, but still not. I'm pretty sure that, uh, I'm pretty sure that even still New Zealand has a higher ratio per capita. We've, All we've right, well, I wasn't going to make it a contest. I was going to say, uh, Rags didn't even uh, guess... say anything about that. What are you bringing up New Zealand for? Is it because uh, of Lord of the no, Rings? Just... Yeah, it's on my mind, but, uh, yeah, because... <laughs> As it always is. As it should there's be. There's about 25 million sheep in New Zealand, and I believe New Zealand has a population about 5 to 6 million. Oh, Okay, well, there, there seems to be even differences. Wikipedia said that, uh, oh, wow, apparently there were 70 million in, in uh, 1982. That was the peak population. In Wales? No, in New Zealand. Oh, 70 okay. Million. So, um, what about the place where Mahler lives? That started the discussion. <laughs> Rags is so confused. Well, what, so, I think, uh, because in Wales, 
Uh, it says that there are 10 million sheep in Wales as of 2017. Um, so as a ratio, yeah, New New Zealand is uh, number one in terms of there being a lot more sheep than people. And then I remember Australia, I had to remind people, there's a lot of sheep in Australia. Um, I believe, how, how many sheep are there in Australia? Oh, God damn it! come on. How many sheep in Australia? Uh, apparently 70 million sheep as of 2022. Now, but of course, we have a population of like 25 million. So as a ratio, I think, which I believe means that as a ratio, we still beat out Wales in terms of having more sheep per capita than Wales. We've got to bump on numbers. We're um, going to maintain that stereotype, huh? Well, it's just the thing is, is that Australia, we, we let Wales have it because Australia has other things that make it a uh, notable, you know, as a like, oh, wow, look at like that. Like crime? That's Australia. Huh? <laughs> no, like, like kangaroos. Like your old prisoners. And sheep and, sheep uh, crime. And uh, you and know, that. defeated um, in the war you know, with the emus, that meme does seem to take over. Yes, uh, because it's funny, and it it's the funny, funny part again to remind people is that uh, we bought machine guns, and it still didn't work. <laughs> they brought in machine guns from World War One to give them to farmers to try and defeat the emus, and it still didn't work. They just had to... I don't think... I, maybe the issue them. was they gave... I think it was they gave a bunch of Lewis guns, and I don't understand. Why not just give them normal, just, like, bolt-action rifles? Do, do emus attack in such large hordes that you uh, need well, machine so, guns? <laughs> the thing... If people... Because obviously people know the memes. The context, I believe, was that there was a bunch of farmland that they were giving out, like, or, you know, selling to people really cheap in Western Australia, that like, out in the sort of outback area. And that was an area where emus would just often roll through. So, like, they had gone out into an area where emus were just abundant, uh, and then they tried to essentially beat them in a war to, to get them to reduce their numbers so that it wouldn't affect any agriculture or anything. And then it didn't work, so they just had to deal with it. <laughs> like, there's just emus around. And that was the gist of it. Because uh, we don't have a, like, in terms of dealing with, um, because remember, we built, like, a big, uh, we built a dingo fence, um, which is only partially effective, and we built a rabbit-proof fence that is not rabbit-proof at all. Um, Rabbits was, dig. They dig, 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 so a fence, I feel, would have to go pretty deep. It was completely ineffective. Uh, didn't, didn't do anything. Didn't work. <laughs> like, it didn't, it didn't control the population of rabbits, which... I believe the reason why rabbits are even in this country is because some guy released a bunch of them to hunt them and he didn't get them all. And so now, now there's like a million sheep. That might even be lowballing. I think it's actually more than a million. It's, I think it's dramatically more than that. So yeah, just some, some little facts about uh, Australia for those of you who didn't know. Eat anyway. more cabbage. Great for gut health. I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, I'm not against cabbage. It's, uh, it's a fun one. Cabbage is all right. It's fine. Saw eleven. Go. It's pretty. It's decently mid tier. Saw eleven, starring Will Ferrell. Uh, maybe. Uh, L.R. Stein. comedians. Yeah. The Chinese author of Goose Goose Brumps. I get it. Goose I get Brumps. It. <laughs> Bringy, please explain why Homer Simpson eating a bunch of Louisiana dishes is funny. Uh, wait, did, when did he do that? I'm going to say it's not that triggering memories for me. Yeah, that reference is completely eluding me. So I can't help you on that one. So Why sorry. it's funny, though? I could imagine it being funny if it was written in the golden age of The Simpsons, of Homer going down to Louisiana and eating some Louisiana cuisine. Yeah. When Evil Lurks is a very scary horror film. It is I, gay actor Michael Douglas, and I recommend it. When it's evil lurks, not holy to that one. I have not heard of it either. That sounds like the kind of name for a horror movie that could be amazing or terrible. You know? Hmm. Yeah, like it could be like a shitty B movie, but it could also be deliberately named to imply something, and that the movie's really contemplative about all kinds of themes. Yeah, yeah. What's the EFAP jingle versus the EFAP motif? Um, we, I had considered actually asking y'all if we need to get like a little EFAP jingle or like a little tone, something really short. Um, I mean, we made it this plays. far without one, right? When do we need it? Where yeah, would it go? I know. 
Oh, I don't know. It's just something to think about, I think. Having a little little chime that plays. Maybe when we move to the Super Chats, we, be, we could hit it. Or whenever we come back from a commercial break, we could hit it like boo -da boom boom Hey, everyone, it's EFAT. Coming back at you for the 9 o'clock traffic. Or, you know, that sort of thing. Or maybe when, uh, when someone says something really good, like one of our guests or one of us says something really amazing and insightful and excellent, and you could hit it and be like, wow, that sounds really good. You get an EFAP point. Or that's a... That's the EFAP take of the, the episode of the week or something like that. Well. Maybe someday. Something to think about. Could is be EFAP going to cover FNAF on a stream or as a recorded video? It'll be in EFAP movies eventually. It will be. Mm. What would we ever pair it with, though? Hmm. Dunno. Five Minutes Freddy's 2, maybe? Yeah, probably. That makes sense, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, hey Mola, I just wanted to stop by to tell you that I really enjoy your videos and keep up the good work. Also, sending virtual pets to rags. Oh, thank you. Like a Neopet or a Digimon? Those are virtual pets. Yeah, I guess so. No, I think he means virtual, like, scritches. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, Mola, are you still working on that Last of Us 2 review? Just wondering. Also, hi, rags. You know Hello. that whether or not I would be... I would never say. <laughs> Who knows what's happening? Though I probably would if I was like a week out from releasing it. But other than that, yeah. So. Yeah, if you got a week away and we're like, nah, I don't know. I ain't feeling it, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think it's still not going to work out. I don't know. Um, we're too busy being terrified about the second season of The Last of Us show. <laughs> to mm -hmm. Think about the game right now. Hello, Mauler and friends. Are there any updates on the Frogs bowling idea brainstormed during this year's EFAP anniversary stream? Last I remember is Fringy writing it down. Uh, I did write it down, uh, but that's sort of in the, uh, it's it's kind of in the, the little storage vault for now, uh, while dabbling away with other other ideas, fun ideas for cartoons and whatnot, um, but I do, I, I, I don't know, there's something about the idea of just frogs sitting in a bowling alley, I don't know, there's something there, there's mm -hmm. something, you know, there's some magic there, but, uh, you know, maybe one day we'll get back around to it. This lad sent in, uh... A wonderful image of a Shiba dog shaking his body from left to right, surrounded by red hearts. Oh, yeah. that sounds nice and friendly. Mm-hmm. EFAP needs a chicken it. Make a gay and lame. Maybe we will. I have to get access to the panda stone. I think Gary has it right now. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. This has... Who would uh... we? Who would we pick if we had a, a girl... A well, girl host. if she's got to be gay and lame, then... <laughs> we don't thing. know any girl... Well, none that are, like, friendly with us. The the gay, lame girls... Have we covered any gay, lame girls? Probably. They've you been lame, don't know but it, I don't think know? any of them have been gay. You know what, right? I just don't even know. I haven't asked. I haven't seen that por portion of the video, but the... I, I don't know. They'd have to really impress me with their gayness and lameness to get onto EFAP. Only the gayest and lamest are allowed to be EFAP hosts. I think this this is an image of marinating chicken, and it says, "Dang it, Bob!" Yeah, he would he would ruin a chicken that way. You should add Wendigoon to your docket of other creators to have on EFAP. I think there are a great many conversations, and more importantly, memes to be had. Also, hi rags. Hello. I've heard of him. Haven't seen any of the content. I believe no. he has been recommended several times, so we'll uh, try and get on that. Rags. I was at a hotel bar getting drunk, and I guess they were having a loser convention because suddenly I was surrounded by nearly 100 people wearing t-shirts under their blazers. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. It must have been a loser convention if you saw that. Yeah, that's true. That's really how you weird they still run those conventions. I just... I guess, you know, they can have some camaraderie. The, the... Yeah, they gotta stick together, you know. Together is powerful or, or stronger. What is it? What's the quote from? Uh, it's, oh, for the the new Ape Godzilla together movie, strong. You mean? Oh, I meant for no. Planet of the Apes. Oh, Apes together strong. But That's I the one. Yeah, that what I said. About, I thought you were talking about the the Godzilla X Kong one, which is <laughs> what is that? Together is stronger or something? Rise, rise together or fall alone. Oh fuck off! It's so rise generic, together or it? fall alone. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> and remember the whole, the remember the the apes together strong, and then there was the ape not kill ape thing, and then Cobra tried to throw it in Caesar's face, 
but then he fucking Uno reverse carded it by saying you were not ape and dropped him. Man, I like those movies. I do. I'm pretty sure that they've got like, there's problems with like plotting and everything, but I really like Caesar. I really like Andy Serkis' Caesar. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I like those movies. Uh, Fringy, you might as well draw yourself as a turkey since you make turkey gobble noises at the end of every episode. Uh, is the same as... Wait, I was about to do... I was about to do a roof noise. No, not. To answer your I was question. About to do a, uh, I was about to do... But that's, that's more of like a... Is that... What, 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 what animal is I that supposed to be? Guess the animal. That's like a... That's like a chicken, you know? Mm -hmm, a rooster. Whereas I guess a... I, I guess a a, a... a turkey is the... The... What the turkey sound is more like, like right? We don't. Uh, no, I don't think so. They make like a. <laughs> we don't. We we don't really have like because uh, a, a, a turkey's native to. Fuck, is this going to be a stupid question? Turkeys are like native to America, right? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um. Oh wait. Uh. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, obviously, we, you know, yeah. you can eat turkey here, you can get turkey, but like a wild turkey is an American, yeah, wild turkey is an American animal. And now, yeah, of course, chickens are not native to uh, Australia either, but chickens just feel like a, you know, you, there's more of like a cultural awareness and familiarity with chickens and, and their little, like, sort of quirks rather than turkeys, I feel. Yeah, chickens are so just like perfect for domestication and consumption and just having around that yeah. they're pretty ubiquitous. Wherever people are, there be chickens. Pretty much. Isn't it uh isn't it kind of like a thing in the in the Florida Keys, like that there were just chickens just roaming around? Like wild chickens? Well, not wild feral, I, mean, there's I guess. Probably wild chickens in a lot of places. Well but I would imagine for the most part feral, because that's like a I mean turkeys, a... yes, but I don't know about chickens yeah. maybe. I don't know. Uh I it's I've never thought because it's, it's kind of like how wild cats versus domesticated cats is like well there's not many wild cats around that are like absolutely one hundred percent pure wild oh, oh well apparently uh I just it's the red jungle fowl is uh like the the um the species that gave rise to the chicken and that's still around in uh in Asia rise of the chicken. I didn't know that. I didn't know that our chickens were originally from, uh, from like Southeast Asia. You learn something new every day. Thanks, Wikipedia. What about the days we don't learn anything? Um, is there a day where someone doesn't learn a single thing? You know, I you guess it's only like it would be told. notable, would it? Like you wouldn't remember that. You. Oh. What if in the what if that day you learned you didn't learn anything? Then it would be notable. I guess that's what needs to happen. You need to have a little message before you go to sleep that pops up saying, "Did you learn anything?" And then you can go, "Oh no." I don't you think have I like did. a diary at the end and of the day, like a little journal at the end of the day. And you write in it, you could be like, today I learned nothing. You know, this. Nothing. Which is like something that you're also learning, but you know, in the spirit of it, you didn't learn anything, even though you technically did. A little sad face. Nothing at all. Yeah. Uh, why do you guys think Batman is always trashed on in Batwoman? Shouldn't he be a character to be revered in that universe? <laughs> you know, you think, uh, <laughs> the only way that you can. The only way you can big up your own new characters is by shitting on the old ones, you see. Yeah, it's literally yeah, it's just a malformed right. malformed writing idea that um, if we had everyone praising him, then all the spotlight would be on him. We need the spotlight to be on our characters, so we need them to... Yeah, this isn't his story, it's our story, even though we are using all of his shit. It's not only going to be that they're critical of him, but they're going to do what he does that makes him cool, and then they're gonna make up for the mistakes that he's made. So that kind of just makes them Batman Plus, which means, surely, the audience will like him more than Batman. Like them more than Batman. So it's just like, it, it seems that way, because a lot of that, that the storytelling, certainly in the early Batwoman episodes, were focused around that. It was fucking unreal. Like, Batman failed in this way, I won't, and then does. Yeah, Batman killed Joker. Oh, thanks. She kills creepy thanks. face man, so... Thank you. Well, yeah, that's right. Remember when she did that? That was hilarious. You remember? Come on! Live! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Out. Ruby, what were you thinking? Oh, I've only worked her for the whole three seasons. Uh, she was so funny. Would have been much more enjoyable. She's a much more 
enjoyable bad actress than the one they have now. I would happily uh, concede that the new one was like fine as an actress. She's not uh, done anything that was. I was like, oh wow, that was really well performed. But yeah, she does Rose emote, and that's kind of the problem. Ruby Rose was so bad; she was hilarious. Yeah, it was the delivery and the expressions and all of it was just. Hmm. Would you rather piss lightning or shit lava? Jeez, or piss lightning, piss right? Piss lightning, right? Yeah. Because uh, shit and lava is going to cause uh, so many fucking problems. I was about to say, but I, I guess it's not the case, because if you're pissing lightning when it hits the water in the bowl, it's not going to do anything to you. It's going to electrify Oh, I figured we bowl. would set up something where you're peeing and it, like, you put some kind of a thing that would attract the uh, the lightning strike and then convert it maybe into energy. Like you, like you piss oh, on, a, like, a lightning sorry, rod? Yeah. Meanwhile, if you shit that, you know. lava, I'm, I'm like, I don't know. You have to go to somewhere special to make sure yeah, everything's done right. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm just imagining the idea of a guy walking in, zipping his pants, and then fucking lightning shoots out. <laughs> like a big flashing light and thunder erupts in the toilet, and it startles him every time. Because I, I guess, I guess it's kind of. I, w I was thinking that it would have an effect on you. I guess you guys were. Because I was just imagining, oh wow, you gotta pass like boiling hot fucking lava through your butt like every day. Jesus, no way I would take that. I wasn't even thinking of just the pure inconvenience of where do you put the lava. Mm -hmm. oh, um, damn, no way. That's not a real choice at all. Yeah. Well, it's, it's easy. The answer. lava's really, really thick too. Like yeah. it is. Well, it's like it's really you know, thick. It's rock. It's molten rock. And rock's pretty thick. Hi, everyone. I mean, like, you'd be in there all day forcing that out, you know? Springy, why is your goo leaking out of New York sewers? More importantly, I'm annoyed that the opinion on the Synthetic Man God of War video has shifted slightly because of the Sweet Baby Ink stuff, and now that there are people saying, where is the apology? What does that have to do? You didn't even bring that up in the video what? at all. Why, why, that, why would that... Even, but what, what, what is the point? Like, that there was, there's, like, what, a consultant group that, like, consults on video games... And makes them worse. Have, like... Made yeah, had like a negative influence on games. I just have to remind everyone on God of War. the uh, issues with him were one, he doesn't play the games that he reviews, so a lot of the points you see him come up with are more so based on intuition. They're trying to like he appeals to whatever you currently believe is the case anyway, which is more than fine because a lot of people watch videos for like reaffirmation of their own beliefs. But, like, the, you ain't getting any insight from him, he's just gonna tell you what you want to hear, which to me is like yeah, the most fucking lame YouTuber you can get. Secondly, yeah, just be wrong a lot of the time anyway. He's really bad at video games. Um, having to watch him play all of Ragnarok, he had no fucking clue what was going on. And he was getting mad at the game for like not listening to it. Then you have his like assessment of the story. He he would shame people for listening to dialogue. So like what use is his assessment of the story at that point? He has no idea what's going on again. And it's like what's left? Like, oh well his just his general oh, attitude, his weird, preconceived weird, notions, his <laughs> like the weird well, like, yeah, and then say it like, can't wait to does. shit all over us when we had nothing to do with him at all. So it was just like, okay, well, he's just awful at reviewing games, and that's like his primary fucking purpose in life, apparently. So I, I like yeah, Sweet like, Baby Ink having know. written lines or decided certain storyline decisions, like that's still not enough. You have to give an argument for why the thing is bad. Yeah, just because it. it's, I mean, it's like it's this juvenile attitude of, well, this person said it, so it must be terrible and wrong, and I need to say it's that way. Like, I didn't of being able to say what actually is wrong. I guess not. I just don't understand how it's like, oh, but did you hear that, like, a consultant group, like, consulted on the game? How, see how that invalidates the, what, 11 hours of, of coverage? Well, and, and yeah, every like cringe I didn't say maybe played a role in some way. I didn't say Alan Wake 2 sucks because of Sweet Baby Ink. I said it sucked for, and then gave loads of arguments about the writing. And the mechanics. Yeah, it just feels like they're not even the same conversation. There's a conversation about how do, how do you feel about, like, these consultant groups that are coming in to talk about whatever sort of weird political stuff that they've got going on. That just seems to me like a different conversation then. Yeah, and again, what about the, like, the actual game that's before you? If you want to contextualize that um, they're the reason for, and then you list a bunch of arguments for why the writing is bad, that's totally fine. Um, but again, he didn't do that. He had barely any ability to criticize the story because he didn't know what happened. No, where, yeah, where was the part where it was like, see, the, the reason why this writing decision was bad because this consultant group came in to talk to Santa Monica about the game and this was their choice because this, 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 and this. Yeah. And how, just, that even, 
How does that address gameplay? Yeah, there's a difference between had, which him had. and a lot of other YouTubers who put in the work to find out what the people who make it say and where they said it and why and what part they're a group they're from and what things they make. Research like that is commendable and awesome, but he's lazy as fuck. I'm sorry. Look, I had to watch oh, him play all of Ragnarok. I know exactly how he plays a game. It was horrible. I mean, especially when you front load with the intention to not really pay that much attention to what's going on. That's not a great sign. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's all the reasons he's terrible at what he actually does. And then on top of it, just like he seems to be a really horrific person. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, some of, the, some of those comments were, uh, Stuff he said about well, I mean, like, that's the thing, though. We're in the and... we're in the pendulum switching era, so people are confused as to whether or not you're allowed to be a complete asshole or not right now, or whether or not you you should be judged for it, or whether or not you should be silenced for it. All this shit's going on so that everyone's like moral compasses are all fucked. But like, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty easy for us to draw yeah, lines because we've been like pretty clear about our perspective on what makes a good or bad person for a long time on this show. So. It's uh, it's it's just like there are several people we wouldn't want on the show, and it includes people like Movie Bob, of course. He he practically is just the right wing, uh, yeah, right wing Movie Bob, Movie Bob. <laughs> I was about to say like Movie Bob is like, I don't even know what fucking wing he belongs to, but he would absolutely wing claim left. Bob. So he he thinks of himself <laughs> yeah, as some I kind of messiah, like like omnipotent, very kind person that'll take care of the world if only he was given the power to do it. And there's a lot of people like that. But but for so long as he doesn't have the power to do it, he can just be a crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't just be mad. So, uh, uh, yeah, enjoy, I guess, you know? Like, it's, it uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't, like, have any interest in coverage of him again. At least with Movie Bobby, can be really funny with the whole, like, super fast talking sentences or wild theories like Marvel's actually, uh, there is no superhero fatigue. Remember he said that right before well, yeah, Quantum Media came out? It was possibly the worst prediction in history. He, he can surprise you. Um, Synthetic Man, in a lot of ways, is pretty boring. Oh, yeah, you know exactly what he's going to say about everything. Over and over and over and over Yeah, and over he sees a black inside. person, yeah. or something is implied to be Jewish, or... Well, yeah, you, straight. there's still and, you know, clips on Twitter of uh, his future videos, and I'm always just like, there he goes again. It's not a fucking surprise. <laughs> there, 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 no Synthetic Man again. Say some crazy shit. <laughs> Best of luck. Uh, I still remember how y'all did a Simpsons Hit and Run stream talking about Loki Season 1, Episode 1, destroying all stakes in the MCU. Was I playing Hit and Run during us talking about yes, that? you were playing Hit and Run, I remember. You booted up Hit and Run, it was EFAT Mini, we had just watched the episode. That is what we call therapy. Flags. I think Metal was there too. Probably. Um, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, as soon as we were done. Because it's we've repeated it a lot, or at least I have. It took WandaVision a few episodes before we were basically like, oh, okay. Uh, Falcon Winter Soldier was by the end of episode one. Oh, okay, Loki was about five minutes before it was it was already done, and we already knew. It's like, oh shit, we're in for like a disaster. I uh, man, that that like all the Infinity Stones in the in the the drawer. Mm -hmm. That that to me just feels so indicative of how insane the writing priorities are at Marvel, to where nobody understood what they had just done with that because they thought it was a cute and funny idea, not realizing everything that stemmed from it. It's practically a precursor for where we would end up, which is that nothing in the universe matters at all. Uh, all of it gets torn down. Hooray. The Demon Hungers. The movie is five, uh, 55 minutes and 34 seconds long, created by VTubers on YouTube now. Mm. Oh, what? boy. That makes me want to see it. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, what is it? <laughs> like, other than it was created by VTubers. Uh, hello, all my N-words. Love you, Massives. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Rewatch Predator, and it's always baffling that people think the Predator would stop hunting them if they just dropped their weapons. No, 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 no. If, uh, like, he's, he wants to fight warriors, right? Like, um, if you hold a weapon yeah. and you threaten him, then that means that it doesn't matter if you were, like, you know, not a warrior as far as he was concerned. At that point, he will fight you. It doesn't work in yeah, reverse, yeah. where if you're a warrior and you drop your weapon, he now no longer considers you a warrior. It's like, no. <laughs> no, it's too late, you know? It's yeah. too late, you made your choice. And it's just something that's super awesome about Predator, that he, you know, someone would, it would likely be said, like, yeah, you wouldn't consider it sporting, right? But at the same time, it's just a matter of, like, yeah, what would be the absolute fucking point of just killing random creatures that can't do anything against me if it's uh, all about celebratory, like, trophies and stuff? It would be like us mm -hmm. taking trophies of 
I don't know, rat skulls who would be like, yeah, good for you, I guess. Why did you, like, what do you, what do you hunt rats? rats it's like, friends. yeah. We would never do that. That's right, you wouldn't do that, that's mean. Uh, regarding the director moving to a different move, not to say, by the way, that the Brits who would view some humans as rats, but maybe they would. This is the thing that never, we never got to explore further in an interesting way for Predator's culture. Um, I guess not in the main movies, anyway. Uh, I was just thinking about how I'm pretty sure they're making another one. Um, and I, won well, I wonder. An alien movie, right? And where we got that? Um, no news on Terminator, so they'll give it a few years. I'm sure we'll get no. another one. <laughs> I feel like they yeah. won't move forward with Terminator if they don't have Arnie. Um, uh, even though he said he's not going to do another one. Well, and the, yeah, him so being that. a part of it does not guarantee anything. As evidenced by Dark Fate and Genesis, both had him, and that wasn't enough. Nope. Uh, regarding the director moving to a different movie, I'm going to push back. Most directors work on multiple projects simultaneously. This feels like a scapegoat. If they're talking about the Marvels one... Uh, I think I even said that that's not going to be something absurd because I think the example I brought up was um, Spielberg working on, he's worked on more than one movie several times, but in the context of abandoning and not talking about the movie that you directed, that is curious information. And then we know the, the additional meta context that directors are not given the job of directing in Marvel. They're often, uh, they turn up for their names and the recognition of the per person they are. They're not really doing much of the job. Uh, countless examples, the one that oh, I always want to go to is the lady who didn't get to do her action scenes in Black Widow, right, and left the project and they had to fire, uh, hire someone else. The, we, knowing how this works, knowing all of this stuff, it's like the idea that she left the project to work on something else, the assumption would be that it's just evidence of how much there's a disconnection. Well, it's, um, the idea is that the director is in charge of creative. That's the, that's essentially what a director is, but on a Marvel project, they're not really in charge. There's a whole bunch of other people who are a lot more powerful in terms of making decisions. There are a lot of decisions that are completely beyond the scope of the directors. Um, and so when when it's reported that, oh, it's unusual for a director to be moving on to another project, I don't think it's meant to be presented in the lens of... It's not... It's, it's unusual for a director to be working on two projects at the same time as, you know, that happens. It's just more so that to to move on and to seemingly not have much of a an influence on what's happening with the film at present seems to be like this sort of implication there. Mm -hmm. She's not really involved anymore. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, all you got to do is look at the film and it's like, <laughs> this is clearly been messed around with, especially now that they've been releasing deleted scenes that include important and relevant context. Yeah. Well, important to this terrible <laughs> script, but still, still important to some extent. It's so refreshing to see mainstream media catching up to the fact that the MCU is imploding. They're being tepid, but at least it's a start. Hashtag get Steven on EFAP. I mean, they're cowards. Uh, uh, a lot of them are. blood in the water. Um, That's the thing. There's blood in the water. It's uh, now safe to point out that uh, Marvel is struggling. Though it still, seems to be, uh, it still seems to be not safe to say that maybe it's uh, Kevin Feige's fault. Mm. There seems to be a lot of like, well, it's not his fault. It's, you know, it's Disney or well, it's, it's external uh, factors. But he's a great Bob Iger said it was, it was COVID and a lack of studio uh, sort of essentially Oversight. babysitting. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fucking fascinating. The idea that. Oh, and also blaming that, uh, that, that interim guy, the, the guy Chapik, when he was in as well. Bob Chapik. Even though a lot of, even though a lot of what are the problems now with things that Bob Iger set in motion? Oh, it's all smokescreen. He wasn't fucking responsible for much of anything in terms of, like, actual significant change that wouldn't have been jump-started by Bob Iger anyway. Um, well, and most people theorize that this the, was all a part of the plan, because it's a bit of a... It's a very brief hiatus, you know? It's a little too convenient, isn't it? That, like, all of the... All of the... Because that's the thing, is, like, all of the Disney Plus stuff and the content that was going on there... And a lot of the Marvel projects that were coming out, as well as Star Wars stuff, that was all set in motion, you know, 2019 earlier, when Bob Iger was still in charge. So, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's kind of, it's like, oh yeah, that other guy did it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he made some choices, but still. I know you Dumbos thank Ryan for the start of EFAP, and slightly Mauler's channel's initial success, but really Disney is to blame slash thank. They hired him and approved the project. Also, play DDLC. 
Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it depends on how far back you want to go. They also but if Ryan had made a good movie, then yeah, you know, then Disney. So yeah, it does feel like it, he's very much. Um, I don't know how to put it. Like it, it, that film is his baby. It feels like he would be the most responsible if you're going to pick a single entity, from what we know. Well, it seems like he got given the freedom to make whatever he wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been here watching since the beginning, yet this is my first Super Chat. I started listening back in high school. I now serve in the Army and as a Navy contractor. You've brought me much joy over oh, the years. Thank neat. you. Well, wow. Oh, thank you very much. We definitely oh, appreciate awesome. you for Super Chat. Yeah, always thank good you. to hear. We're entertaining all kinds of people all over the world. Hope you're doing well, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Mola discussed this on the last open bar, but can you guys go over why this doesn't, why this doesn't new information doesn't, wait a minute, let me, uh, post this so that you guys can see what I'm reading. So we can help you. <laughs> no, see what I'm reading. But can you guys go over why this doesn't new information doesn't change the synthetic man God of War Ragnarok review is still oh, yeah, trash. Okay, also high rags. Oh, that's, that's yeah, we kind of, we kind of did cover that. Yeah. In a previous super chat. Yeah, well, yeah pretty much. I don't even, I just don't understand the thinking. Oh, I don't know why it would. Was, yeah. There was a consultancy group that would have been involved with like having some amount of influence on the writing. Therefore, it means that all of the, th like it recontextualizes it means everything. It's bad now? Review. Well, so the review that was made there's an easy way to explain this. To any of this information. Um, take a film that you guys like that came out recently. And when I say you guys, I mean literally anyone who's listening to this, just any film, be it uh, Oppenheimer or. Uh, John Wick 4, Extraction 2, Guardians 3, any of these films, just take one, and if you found out that uh, Sweet Baby Inc. wrote most of it, does that now make it a bad film? I don't understand why it would if it's the same content. If I liked it, then I liked it. Yeah, like, regardless. their involvement doesn't actually... That's not an argument against the quality of the writing and the thing. Like, we, it's mm -hmm. simply an explanation if we found bad writing, but... Of course, it would be then awkward if they were a part of something that had good writing, because that mean then that they're capable of it, or that their influence isn't always um, detrimental. Well, I guess what is the what is even the extent of the influence? How much of, it, of the influence could is there any way of actually knowing for sure how much as a percentage of the script was affected by their whatever I don't know advice they offered, whatever their consulting was, or was it just a thing where it was like I guess use of money where it's like yeah let's pay to bring some people in and tell us things that we may or may not use it is a yeah. it is an incredibly juvenile and immature mindset to have where you have to tie the quality of a thing only to the person who made it people i don't like or people i think are cringe can't possibly create something good even though in um, this if case, they made not... it it has to be bad i can't they can't have any credit for anything that they do just by virtue of them being the ones who made it, it has to be bad. It's it's like I mean, it's actually the attitude of a child. It's but it's not even that. It's 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 not even that they made it. It's that that the people who made it might have heard something, might have tell been them influenced. something that they might have included or might not have. Like I, just, I, um, I don't know. I don't yeah, know and of course my my analogy or whatever they obviously switch it to games if they only do games, just games you liked and sort of Anthem. the equivalent. But um. Well, it's something what, I've talked about on observations would they have made on mechanics? What would they have said about the mechanics? Are they or are they just a story know. consultation thing? That's Sorry, the thing, I have no idea, but um the uh the sort of coverage of any given game or film or whatever we want to get into the specifics of why or why not something is working. I, I was I was talking about this on another stream, but Sweet Baby Inc. being in the same vein as any individual creator as Ryan, uh, Rags was talking about, the I was about to say Ryan Johnson. It's like Ryan Johnson could never make anything good, right? And it's like, no, no, he could. He, any day he could drop a thing and we'd all have to concede that it's like, oh shit, that's good if, if we felt that the writing in it was very strong. But he keeps surprising us in the sense of, I already knew I didn't like Looper from when I saw it, but like, I, I don't even know if I knew at the time I was seeing the guy who made Looper's. Star Wars film. I can't remember if I knew that or not. In any case, uh, TLJ had everything going for it when I went to go see it. I was super hyped from the trailer. I thought it looked fucking great, and I thought of all the different ways it could go, you know, and then I was like, oh shit, that was bad. Then Knives Out comes out, and I was told that was very good, and that was evidence that the guy can fucking make films. It's just Star Wars he was not very good at, and you're like, yeah, okay, fine. I check it out. I was like, fucking hell, that was terrible. And then it was like, Glass Onion? Is he gonna fail again? And then blown away by how piss poor it is, and you know, if anyone was like, well, 
uh, is it just like Ryan Johnson then, pattern recognition? It's like, absolutely not. I'm still waiting to take anything from him in a very fair light and see what happens. I think that's reflected in um, Ridley Scott, James Cameron. We talked about it before. We said we were really disappointed with James Gunn's third Guardians film because the three of us are big fans of the first and second, and we had no reason to think he wouldn't nail it with the third one. Uh, he did not. Mm. And so instead of, I guess, gripping patterns or rewriting a pattern in order to fit the new plane, it can just be like, well, it doesn't necessarily have to mean anything, but you don't have a guarantee of any level of quality from most people. Most artists. People who you don't like or who you think are cringe or, or organizations. aren't aligned with you politically. They could make good and bad stuff. I mean, it's why we, Which, you yeah. know, it's going to be thrown in as a reason for why we're still watching Disney stuff and trying to be fair to it. It's like, why would you expect anything good? It's like, well, it is possible. Sometimes. And most people yeah, did like yeah, Guardians 3, which is invariably yeah. under Disney's wing, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to get yourself to a place where you are unnecessarily restricting your ability to see good things. Um, but then again, at the same time, you might have a thing of, well, I want to be taking a gamble with every fucking thing that I watch. You know, sometimes I want I want some reliable metrics for what I'm going to enjoy yeah. and what I'm not going to enjoy. And that's totally fair. Um, but you don't want to get yourself to a place where you essentially make it impossible uh, to see things that are potentially good because of who's making them. Well, like uh, Mike Flanagan, right? If he comes up with another TV show, I don't think any of us are going to be like, well, brace yourself, this will be shit. It's like, well, no, we're, we're kind of just doing that for the last episode. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, that could be like, so, yeah, that is working off patterns. And it's like, it is. It's just like, try and leave the door open for something understand else to happen. The, well, understand the potential imperfection of your patent recognition abilities. It can lead you to almost be prejudiced and biased in a very, very negative way. We want to be careful, otherwise but, we'll miss out yeah, on the cool things yeah. that come out in those little spaces. Or I guess have the things that you previously liked not be good anymore because of one piece of information that doesn't really tell you much at all about what the influence of that actually was on the thing that you formerly liked. Uh, Doctor Doom is what I'd use to hard reset all of Marvel post Feige. Wasting him on a still sinking ship would be a mistake. He should be the Loki of a brand new Fantastic Four and X Men continuity. It's um, if they re like actually hard reset and then we start with Doctor Doom, I don't see why anyone would have more hope for that than if he was just introduced right now. Other than he's got less baggage to have to deal with, but ultimately. If they made an amazingly good Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom film, and they dropped it on the MCU right now, it probably would do more to help heal their reputation than a brand new continuity would in terms of um, people thinking like, oh, it's not over. we still got something that we can work with. Brand new continuity, you're like, okay, well, I guess, uh, you know, we'll give this one a chance then based on the first movie being good. What I guess I'm trying to say is that I feel like there's equal chance of it being bad whether or not it's launching as a new continuity or not. From them. Uh, I mean, if nothing changes in terms of how Marvel makes its movies, then it's unlikely that it would turn out good, regardless of whether they reset in a new continuity. If nothing changes in their production process, just the odds aren't looking good. Because it would foster more hope if it were a brand new continuity, but I don't know. I just. Uh... Uh, maybe in the same way that DC doing a I think reset is like, yeah, you can forget about all that shit. There is no story decision in, uh, before the films come out that I could be told about that would give me hope. It's always now going to be, uh, who's making it. And even then it's like, but you know, still, you know, fingers crossed kind of situation. It's not yeah. Like it's guaranteed. Well, yeah. Cause if I they mean, said Sam Raimi is making it, it'd be like, yeah, but. Sam Raimi, yeah, but like, it? like real Sam Raimi or fake Sam Raimi? It's <laughs> like, like a yeah, fucked yeah, up yeah, Sam yeah, Raimi. Yeah, exactly. Is it like old Sam Raimi or is it multiverse of madness Sam Raimi? Um, hi, Mola, Free, and Rags. Hello. Oh, hey. Oh, I figured there was. I yeah. Hey. Howdy. Do you think it's time to revisit the original Star Wars movies and do a full breakdown for each of them to remind everyone what real peak Star Wars really is? Um, I'm um, not against the idea. I mean, it's just we got a lot of stuff we're doing. Maybe when less yeah. stuff's going on. Maybe. When less is going on. Maybe it'll be when a video for the ages. On. We are behind in many ways right now, but we would, uh, we've got plenty of ideas for things we want to do. 
It's a simple fix. Just have all the Kangs get crash their private jet, then Alice helps them reconstruct their faces so they look like someone new. Wow. You know what? You Love solved it. it. You did it. Yeah. You did it. There you go. Disney can have that one for free. Bring you might like this. My kids' lullaby songs consist mainly of video game songs from Halo 2 and Dia Dia Docks from Mario 64 is a must every oh. night. Dia Dia Docks is, uh, I'm actually, that's so funny. I've actually been re-listening to it a bit lately because it's such a soothing song. Um, Dia Dia, you guys remember that one, right? I probably I would if it was, sure yeah. Do, 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 That's like the melody. If I heard it, I would. Do 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 That's basically it. It's really good. Um. Also, Halo music, depending on which ones you pick. Yeah. Because obviously, they got a lot of great music for that. They got a lot of high octane tracks for sure, but like Heavy Price Paid or um on Remembrance and uh uh what what was the one the dun 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 uh, oh, it, oh, oh that's art, it, it pops it's up peril. in art. Peril, peril. peril. Yeah, yeah. There, uh, there's a lot that of, shows uh, up first when uh, you play Arbiters. Yeah, first level. It's uh, yeah. Th those are both uh, really good selections for soothing music. Obviously, if you wanted to get anything that was more, uh, both of them also have more high octane action packs, like Bob on Battlefield. Man, that's pretty. Uh, oh god, that's such a great opening little. You know. Um, piece there do 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 oh i love it get your hypes for the level ahead super mario brothers wonder has uh some cool new stuff as well uh because i got like their new little um their new like main theme to replace uh to replace the old one that's a good one lots of good mario music my bet is that the Marvels won't make 400 million. I think it's even possible it'll make less than 300 million. What? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny. It crashed and burned. And, uh, yeah, it set the tone a little bit. Not that others hadn't already, but, you know, with every crashing and burning. Because, like, Aquaman 2, people don't seem to care as much about in terms of its results. Um, I think the Marvels no. was more of an impact and sort of cultural touchstone. To I think of... it's because um, the feeling is that however well Aquaman does doesn't really tell you anything about uh, the new reboot. Yeah, especially given that it's going to be a year and a half until that materializes, whereas the Marvels, that's Marvel, that has actually, you know, been successful for a while. Big deal. Mm. Phase 6, the MCU's greatest threat ever, relevancy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to cancel projects. Hello, Mola. Which was the worst Halloween game? Amnesia Rebirth, Scorn, or Alan Wake 2? So interestingly, I, have, I didn't finish I've, one I've of not them. Played him. Yeah, I didn't play Alan Wake 2, but of the two I've played as to which is the worst game... Rebirth is the worst game of the two. Scorn has the benefit of being over quickest. Incredibly short, yes. It's got to count for something. Um, um, Amnesia Rebirth has more interesting... happening mechanically, I suppose. I think uh, they both had incredible potential, and there were some good things about both, but, I mean, man, being short gives you such a huge advantage it's uh this is kind of funny to listen to us having not played any of these games but i think um based on everything i've heard i i kind of feel like alan wake 2 is the one that frustrates me more because it feels like it represents an attitude in gaming that i don't like which is well like, it would be like i can't imagine a, a playing a game that's basically a story with very little gameplay and the story and characters and are then shit. the story sucks yeah but and, and yeah yet for it to get massive amounts of props because it's like well it has good graphics and like cinematography and it's kind of got like an interesting atmosphere that it tries to create that is in some sense betrayed by its own story it feels it feels to me like the kind of it's it's a kind of game that you know it, the the archetypal or I guess stereotypical game journal would really like because it makes them feel like they're reviewing movies instead of video games uh, because they have a lack of respect for video games as a medium. But, you know, maybe I'd be more annoyed by the fear flashes. Maybe I would be more annoyed by the fact that Amnesia Rebirth is the product of people not liking or not understanding Soma, you know? 
one, yeah, you can't separate the fact that if you are waiting for Soma's, like, the next entry, that is it. It's from that, sort of, that team. It's like, you liked Soma, you liked Amnesia of the Dark Descent, it's like, here's our next thing, like, oh boy, and it's one of the worst fucking things, like... Uh, Fear Flashes. Honestly, the Fear Flashes could actually take it for me in terms of the worst of the three. Remembering that. I think, um... This Fear Flash there, is in Alan Wake 2, by the way. Oh boy, great! <laughs> Those are really clever and interesting. Not, not as um, many, but you know. I think, and also, yeah, go, coming from Soma to Amnesia Rebirth was like it's a it's a huge gut punch to have your expectations yeah. set really high for a very good reason, and then that's what you get instead. Yeah, yeah. but boy, yeah. Scorn was uh, Scorn was short. Well, there you go. Um. Hey guys, would you consider playing the video game of Family Feud for EFAP Gaming? I think it would be fun, especially with guests. Um, yeah, that's not a bad... Yeah, that would make a good EFAP... That would make a really good EFAP game. Well, wait, how, uh, does it, game. how does it work? Like, is it... What? Are you familiar with Family Feud? Well, yeah, but they said, like, the, the video game for it, is it, like, on Steam? I assume you'd have... Oh, where is it available? I don't know. I assume Steam has some sort of one, but... I would assume so. Well, I'm not against that. I would idea. be surprised if they didn't. Yeah, I think that would make a really good EFAP games, uh, EFAP gaming game. Um, I've not laughed this hard in a while. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Glad to hear it. Well, Some people just need a slap. I hope I hope you have been laughing in general. But yeah. Glad that we can make you laugh. This is insane. Andor was a whole season of fantastic TV, but it didn't mean that the franchise was getting better. On the contrary, since it's gotten even worse with Mando Season 3 and Ahsoka. Well, and even worse since then with Dave Filoni getting uh, cheap creative officers. Yeah, and there's, there's no confusion about that. Uh, Gilroy is the one behind Andor with and a team, team that yeah. have nothing to do with a, the other a stuff. Miraculously, a miraculous team, really. Like it, it really is right that you that you got like backgrounds in fucking making Nightcrawler, House of Cards, uh, directing a bunch of television, like for you know well-regarded television shows that all of that managed to coalesce. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, but then again, John Favreau has made good movies, but something I mean, changed. He ain't... Correct me if I'm wrong. Ugh. We said for years before Andal came out, could be good considering who's making it. Uh, I think so, but yeah, it's definitely because of, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi really, it just puts you in a place where it's like, man, if, if the Obi-Wan Kenobi show was in a position to fail this bad, what chance does, you know, Andor have in a certain sense, given that he's, a uh, less, uh, he has less pedigree as a character than, than Obi-Wan. Yeah, and I think that was the take, it was like, even if it is good though, like, who's gonna care, and how much difference will it make, and we've got the answer to that, pretty much none. Unfortunately, yeah. And all... uh, I do find it interesting that it's like kind of an, an uh, a ridiculous scene as a ridiculous idea of maybe give like Tony Gilroy if he wanted it, you know, another show or a little bit more responsibility in you know guiding Star Wars. That that notion is absurd, but the Dave Filoni makes perfect sense. Yeah. There's no sound in space, bro. No. Why? Why though? Was did someone say that there was or? There's no context. I'm <laughs> afraid. I think we all know that. Or was it? Uh, I don't know. Does everybody know that? I I assume most people probably do, or maybe they I don't. I don't thought most people do now because of how much it gets corrected. But I don't know. Maybe. maybe. I I guess my thinking was that maybe because of how much like sci-fi there is, where you have sounds in space that just because that's in movies that people kind of assume like, well, yeah, of course it'd be sound in space. Oh, sweet crispy critters. Walt in his grave is a perpetual motion machine and how much he's rolling over in there. Wonder how the Epcot timeline is. It would be funny to know what Walt Disney would think of everything going on right now. Yeah, I mean, it's a very different company. He has a little YouTube rant video. It'd be fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that'd be pretty funny. Uh, I've had enough or something, you know, full stop at the end. <laughs> My response to Disney. Yeah. My response to me. Hey, Massives. I replayed Little Nightmares 1 and 2 for Halloween, and they're quite short, so play them. 
Also, thoughts on Night Before Christmas. I watched it recently and I adore it. Also, High Rags. It's a great movie. Hello. It's very, very good. I haven't seen it in a while, though. I need to rewatch it sometime. I saw it about three months back or so. It's uh, fantastic. One of God, my most I love that movie. beloved What's movies from song? childhood. From song? Night Before Christmas, I mean, I, I think we did actually have this discussion before. I, I kind of adore This Is Halloween, like the opening song. That's a really good one. Um, I love the vibes. <laughs> Uh, what's this is really good. <laughs> what's this? Ooh. What's this? What's this? Mullet, what is your most proudest piece of art you produced? Is it a YouTube upload or another personal project? Also, would the TFA series overtake? I suppose if it was considered all as a collective once it's finished, that probably would be my most proudest thing that I've made. But as it stands, it's probably TFA Part 3. Uh, that one in particular, which has been torn a little bit by YouTube being a cunt with copyright. Um, hopefully I can redeem that once I get further along with the TFA series. Um, but I mean, I'm also, you know, somewhat proud of like, you know, there's a lot of like EFAB episodes where I feel like we really covered a lot of important topics in, in really effective ways. Um, it's, it's hard to say exactly. It's, uh, it's, it's complicated. So I'm not sure how I would fully rate it. It would, it would be like a thing that had the most work hours in it or thing that I, I had to come up with creative solutions for a thing that I think is the most meaningful, at least to me, or thing that I've found is most meaningful to people that I made it for. It's like, there's a lot of different things that might take the the gold, so. Um, mm. But the easy answer, yeah, would probably be, TFA Part 3 was particularly difficult in that I did a lot of mixing with sound effects and the soundtrack to try and blend with what I was saying and talking about at the time, and uh, I thought it made for a rather engaging video. You masters need to step up your showmanship. You could have sold way more vinyls with green screen space cats. Yeah, that's Ooh, true. Very true. Something we got to consider for the future. We'll get on it next time. Green screen space cats. 100%. Check out Legal Mindset. He's a lawyer from Florida who specializes in property. He's been going all over Disney and how they've been screwing up in court. An insane amount of money that they're losing. Hmm. Interesting. Apparently, Pixar had some big layoffs today, like 20%. Uh, like, I heard the announcement was that, yeah, there's potentially 20% reduction, but that it's not finalized yet. How many people are going to lose their jobs? And still, um, even the potential of that getting talked out in public now. Ouch. Uh, I guess, and that was after they'd already laid off, wasn't it? Like 12 or 13% the other year, wasn't it? Did they light off people last year? I remember that being a, a an announcement as well. Um... I guess the thing is, um, their films haven't been so successful lately. Um, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure what the response to that is. You know, I'm not sure what the, uh, I don't know, I don't know what the angle is for Pixar. Well, I mean, obviously, make good films is uh, is pretty reliable. But uh, like, you know, how are they going to make more sequels in response to it? Or you know, I'm not sure. Uh, if you were Jewish, would you be Molstein or Mubig? I don't know. Or just Moller. <laughs> but I'd also be Jewish. Uh, I think Five Nights at Freddy's will make more than Captain Marvel. That's an easy yeah, prediction. It did, yes. Uh, I feel like everybody would have had that perspective, to be honest with you. It's, it's it, it, like I think even fucking Disney would have thought that before, like <laughs> a year before releasing yeah. Captain Marvel. Bring if you tried Pizza Tower, you'd like it. Uh, is that like a game? I believe so. Yes. The Way of Life. I haven't played it, I haven't played it but uh, maybe I would. Yeah. Next one says I second that. Frongo play Pizza Tower. Uh yeah, maybe. Mull, would you ever consider watching and or reviewing the Star Wars animated shows Clone Wars Bad Batch Rebels? Maybe. I would maybe consider it. I would maybe consider considering it. Um, but I've got no distinct desire, you know, how it goes. Counterpoint. Doctor Doom kills one of the Avengers slash Fantastic Four, and it plays his theme song from Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yeah. Well, <laughs> why not at this point? Yeah, let's go for it. Mutant prejudice in the MCU world would not make sense when the Hulk holds celebrity status in-universe. Well, he's one of the good ones. 
It's um, it's kind of hard for them to implement mutants in the MCU world right now. But the thing is, they don't right give a shit. Now, yeah. They'll do it anyway. Yeah. I'd use Mephisto as the M Puppet Master. He said Muppet Master. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that might be one easy way to almost retcon <sighs> everything as Mephisto made everybody insane. What I would have done if we had to keep it. it is. Yeah. Imagine if Lynn Denelin was from London and therefore called London Lynn Denelin. London Lynn Denelin. That would be difficult, but not impossible to get that name out consistently. Lynn Denelin. You guys ever seen Gendy Tartakovsky's 2003 Star Wars Clone Wars miniseries? No, but I want seen to. seen some of it. Uh, it was really neat, but I was very young when I saw it. So, um, yeah, who knows? But I remember it being quite neat. <laughs> I should control my laughter for this one. You guys have just accidentally revealed the next Halloween arc is obviously the Halloween films. Uh-oh. You got us. You got us. Damn it. Right, he's got to work on not revealing. Obviously your fault. You must have said, oh, this is just like when we watched all the Halloween films recently. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I got to... I was watching out. I was... Didn't think they'd pick up on that. You know what sucks for the EFAB audience? They'll be listening to this, and they're like, so it wasn't Halloween. And then someone else would be like, no, that's what they would say if it were Halloween, though. And then uh, someone else would be like, no, well, wait, but what if they know that? <laughs> the nature of these lies. When will you know the truth? Or are they lies? Who knows? The luckiest part about the Marvels is that none of them are romantically involved. Imagine the consequences of forceful, involuntary replacements. Yeah, but I mean... I, I, as somebody say, but like you know, it should be so incredibly unlikely, and it's so straightforward to not cause the transport teleport thing. But they're also stupid in the movie. They all decided to touch the crazy floop energy in space for some reason. Did you guys see that Wouldn't weird? You? Oh yeah, totally. You guys see that weird Marvel's TV spot where they had the girl power scene and played the Avengers theme? Legit thought it was a meme at first. Oh, did they like play? The, the scene from Endgame, but with the Avengers theme. Why not? I'll convince people to watch the Marvels. Yeah, so it's you know, like it's a good Avengers. thing. Uh, I mean, I don't see why they're... You're like, yeah, they're destroying all the properties, but consider all those uh, the tickets, those extra tickets that the women are buying now. Oh, yeah. That they feel represented oh, or whatever. Oh, so that's why they're making that. all that money. A little fact about the film is that opening weekend was majority men uh, watching <laughs> the film. We and turned up. Like where were the women? It was like 65, 66%, so about two-thirds were men. So what you're saying is that women have destroyed Marvel? Well, they didn't show up for it, I guess, in as high numbers as the lads. See, we were proud and ready for a woman to show us how powerful she was, but the women weren't. Right. They, they were yeah. sitting at home, watching Netflix. Hello from South Africa, lads. First ever Super Chat, and just Hello. wanted to say, may the tisms be with you. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Supergiant Games, 12 employees, even after Hades. Ah, uh, yes, they're very small, even though their games are very successful. Um, which is kind of an interesting thing, because it seems that that kind of needs to be a deliberate choice, because most of the time it's always more, 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 more people. Yeah, try not to balloon. Um, well, I think that's the understanding, is that the more people you add, the more that you change the company. You just you just do. Yeah. Um, you change the company, you change the kind of games that you're going to make to where you might not make the kind of games that you want to make. Um, but it's so natural for growth to be the, the guiding principle of, well, yeah, grow. We made more money, so we'll get more people, more people, bigger projects that might not be what they want. So it's, it's uh, interesting that they, uh, th despite the fact that their games are very successful, Successful enough that they could probably massively expand that they've deliberately decided to stay small. Uh, do, do, do. Sorry, guys. They won't let me put 90 million in a super chat. YouTube won't even give you the bare minimum. I hope you can live on these days. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello. Well, What's we appreciate about 90 million. I don't know, but we appreciate 89 million all the same. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. It'd be so funny if I was super chat that I'd be like, um, like if that were even possible to be super chat fucking ninety million dollars, she'd be like, I don't. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm about to go to... through a lot of interesting issues with my bag and with taxes and with everything. 
Andor has somber performances and realistic sets. Star Wars fans, look, they Blade Runnered. It's gray. It's gray. <laughs> it's gray. <laughs> Just like Blade Runner. They Blade Runnered. Yeah, the famously gray. Uh, um, yeah, Blade Runner is famously gray. It's famously gray as opposed to blue and, and yellow. That's a, It's a very blue movie. It's got a lot of, uh, a lot of blues and a lot of yellows, which I'm pretty sure that's where the Deus Ex, you know, Human Revolution being a particularly yellow game, like, in terms yeah, of the, uh, the color scheme. It's got an aesthetic scheme. to it, yeah. And it feels very oh. deliberate. A lot of the UI design choices. Oh, it was, it was absolutely on purpose. Yeah. I mean, to where Mankind Divided is distinctly less yellow uh, and more naturalistic. I think uh, I think the director's cut of Human Revolution they actually dialed back uh, the yellow because it was something that was noted that it's a very yellow color scheme. But yeah, it's a style. Mm -hmm. uh, the new Gen V show is horrible. I'm convinced they were ripping on Christianity if the writers carried over. Everything is so cynical and weird. They made a Nazi PewDiePie joke for like oh six years late. Uh, high rags. Oh God, he's a queer. Hello. Remember that? Allegedly. This oh is all allegedly. Oh my god, he's a queer. <laughs> oh my god, he's That's a, a EFAP 1 reference, so good that stuff. That is an EFAP 1 reference. Um, That's right. It's old school. I've heard weird things about Gen V. I've heard, like, it's terrible, but then I've also heard some people say it's alright. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that one. Hmm. Uh, thoughts on the concept of certain points in a timeline cannot be changed or else the universe implodes. All hosts must uh, answer. Alright, we'll go one at a time, I guess. Uh, I know that this is something that Doctor Who does. Um, it doesn't make sense, fundamentally, unfortunately. Uh, I, I know it's liked, and I understand why it's liked, because it's kind of a, um, have your cake and eat it. We can go back and change things on a smaller level, but the, you can't just not have the Titanic happen, because the well, that'll, that'll, no, you, you can't just, you can't have the TARDIS there and it saves everybody. We can't do that. And you're like, why? And he's like, well, I mean, imagine the crazy knock-on effect. And it's like, okay, so if that is a fixed point in time, is the ship that crashed over there, like, a fixed point in time? The, the you know, whoever ship that is? And you're like, I, I don't think so. And you're like, why? I guess not enough people died. And it's like, so how many people have to die before it's a fixed point in time? And who, like, decides this? 5,999,999, unfortunately. Damn. <laughs> like, so... Or 6 million and one would be the... You know, like, yes. Pompeii is a fixed point in time, or World War One and Two, and, and you just sort of start to think, like, are you just sort of choosing... Well, what's the... Yeah, it's like, so what is the link between human lives being lost and the universe... Like not being able to as, redo as events. Like, a like what's the link? I, I think they well, would argue like too many things like, like, in future rest on this event happening, but ultimately, in a well, way, why would the universe care? Well, why would the universe care? Well, yeah, not only that, but also like whoever the most important figure of World War One or Two is. If I went to, you know, when they were a kid and kidnapped them, and then for a week like tortured them and then put them back where they were, it's like shouldn't that alter the craziest levels of that war forever? Because that that kid has now got a completely different history. Little, you know, make it make different. You understand what I'm saying? Like, technically, I put him back, so it's fine. I haven't changed much, and uh, but like, it's going to lead into something that cannot be changed. But surely, him being well, completely different, of, you know what I mean? Oh, cause and effect thing. That cause and effect. You know, it goes from a point of something happens, and then it if, has this effect, and then that prompts this decision, and this decision, and that decision to where things can change. Yeah, if, if a particular gun being invented at the right time allowed a particular battle to be won, which allowed the war to be won, of whatever war is a fixed point, what if the inspiration and creativity that was taken to make that gun was something I altered, like he was looking at a design, and then I take the paper away when he's not looking, he looks back and he's like, oh, I don't know what that was, I thought I had an idea, but no. And then, like, gets lost in someone else. It's like, I've, have I not changed the fixed point now? Rather than just this thing in history that... Oh, it's just, what happens if you get a time machine, go on the Titanic, and 30 minutes earlier say, there's an iceberg that way, turn left. They would say, I think in Doctor Who, it. you can't do that. But like I said, the line between changing a fixed point in history and the things that lead to the fixed point in history, I think it's way too blurry. And at this point, you'd be like, can you stop I mean, thinking about it that much? And you're well, like, yeah, okay. I mean, and especially if it if it gets to the point where it's like the universe itself recognizes events that ought and ought not happen, that instead of the universe being indifferent, it's like the universe is a thinking entity that has a perspective on events. I don't think we need to. Uh, that you know, 
Yeah, I don't think we need to shy away from the reality that a writer would put this in there so that we can respect these events have to happen and that we can have them be sort of witnessed in the stories and that you, you don't just go back and save people from a Titanic and save people from Pompeii, whatever disasters you have, and just be like, there you go, I did it, I'm fixing the world. Like, so they, they want, because I think that stops asking questions about the Doctor as well, because you'd be like, why wouldn't he just be doing that all the time? Like, solving all of the crises that ever happened and changing history all the yeah. time. So it, what I guess I'm saying is like, I understand why they've implemented it, I don't think it makes any sense when you really pick at it, but to be fair, it's really hard to make this shit make any sense. Like a story that's built based around he travels through time and space constantly every episode. How do you make that make sense? Right, and so all of this was through the lens of Doctor Who, right? Uh, that's the one that I'm that's familiar with, but of course there are there are other versions of this, I yeah, suppose, fixed be points other in time. Yeah, that have the idea of fixed point in time events and everything like that. But simply we're meaning just about Doctor Who. Simply I mean, meaning, the well, it, the HD Wells time machine does that. I was going to say, the, the, talking about Doctor Who is not too relevant because I assume they do mean the way it's described in Doctor Who, which is that there are things you can change in back, when going back in time, but there are th some things you're not allowed to change or can't change. Yeah. But well, when they say not allowed by who, like the universe itself? Oh, well, so in, I, like I guess there would be two school of thoughts for that because like in Doctor Who, he can change it, but he knows he shouldn't because it'll have drastic repercussions. But then there are other things that like any attempt to change it will not stop it or something i guess I uh yeah but what about like hypothetically for example if changing an event like destroys the universe like the universe itself well that could be another because, uh version of it if changed. if yeah but like again i just i don't think you can make it consistent and i don't know how the universe would choose between fixed and non-fixed events yeah um but i mean they, again hypothetically no, no movie yeah so, I like I said, I, I appreciate they why they now. do it, uh, but I just, I've never been convinced by it. I've been like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's the kind of thing where it can be, yeah, like on its face, it can be like, oh, that's, a, that's like an interesting idea, but it's always implications, 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 you know? Like, what, what, are, what are all of the knock-on effects of this? How do you square it away with any number of other stories that your story may be related to? That's always... It's a difficult thing, time and space, to meddle with, you know, when mm -hmm. it comes to in-universe and out-of-universe. It's like Morty said, I think, it, it bucks life, it bucks real hard or, or whatever. And so so too does time and space as uh, elements of, uh, of fiction writing. It's, uh, it's, like a, it's like a horse, you know, jumping up and down, and it's, he's difficult to tame. And once you tame him, everybody's so tempted to tame him because he's such a majestic horse, he's so cool. And if you could just tame him and then ride into town and everybody would look at your horse called Time or, or Kronos or something and you'd be like, holy shit, that's an awesome horse. But for every one person who manages to tame Kronos, there's like a hundred other people who've broken their legs getting bucked off the horse because they were going a bit crazy with their time travel related ideas. Yeah, if there's the rule of thumb to avoid, multiverse, time travel, and then as the tears go just down. be careful. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, those ones are be careful to the point of seriously. Do you need to do this? Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Is Meanwhile, this necessary? like you tear down to you. resurrection or something. It's like you can do it. Just it's you know. Just you know, you know compared to and then you're all the way down to two people in a room having a conversation. <laughs> yeah, which well, is like yeah, go ahead. Pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty pretty straightforward. Rags, do you have anything yeah. you think about this overall? I mean, that's pretty much. Uh... I pretty much said it. It wasn't uh, too much mm -hmm. that I can add to that, really. Um, the universe isn't an agent, and the laws of logic are descriptive. The way that the universe is doesn't... The universe isn't acting towards its self-preservation. The universe isn't trying to get things to be things that we would call good stories. Um, so if you, know, if you make a story where conveniently there's some mysterious magical rule about reality itself that just happens to be a story you want to tell... I'm like, eh, it's like, okay, but uh, yeah, there's no reason why certain events have to happen. There's no reason why the universe would care if World War II happens or if Hitler dies as a baby or anything like that. Like, the universe just doesn't care. It doesn't well, have to do anything. The, the universe doesn't write its own canon in a way of, like, trying to create its own canon. What happens is what happens. Uh, yeah. 
if you like, need to come like, up with it's something like the universe is a person who sits down like i'm gonna type out my fucking novel for everything that happens within me yeah and then, and then this war happens and this person happen. lives and this person gets to become king and then this planet turns in this way like no nah, just yeah. things just go as they go and mm -hmm. um if you well, want to you, yeah. if you want to come yeah. up with some reason about like if you were to come up with a universe where I don't know, s people have souls, and when those souls die, they release an energy, and then if a lot of souls die within a certain amount of time, that creates this well of universe something, and that means that it becomes a fix. You, like, you have to get into these crazy kinds of things to sort of have that, um, or, or at least you have to work really hard to make that seem like it's plausible in the fictional world that you create, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's an odd one. Uh, I don't think it has really much merit to it at all. I wouldn't make it in my story. Is <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I wouldn't. This idea that certain things just have to happen because uh, I don't know. It, That's it what comes across by, a like, lazy the fabric to me of reality. Mm. But you know, this yeah, you know, you know, it's a complicated thing. <laughs> I don't think anyway, we've seen yes. how Tom Holland Spider Man got his powers either. Were they considering no, doing that uh, in the animated prequel or whatever? Oh, uh, if that ends up happening, I don't know. Because I think it's meant to be, like, the first year or so of that. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I don't... I mean, again, it feels like Homecoming was a response to th just the reality that everybody knows what the origin is and we don't need to see it again. Kind of like what the Batman yeah, did, yeah. where it's like, well, we don't need to see it. I mean, we all we all know the deal. Probably how Superman won't show the origin again, because everybody knows it at this point. On the topic of suffering for a project, Mila Jovovich's stunt double was permanently maimed and a crew member was crushed by a set prop and died during the filming of Resident Evil, the final chapter. Think about that. Jesus. Yeah, I heard something about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Damn. An Damn. An accident. Yeah. Damn. Sucks. I mean, it happened with uh, the stunt double for Batwoman, too. Yep. Yes, suffered serious injuries. And uh, Ruby Rose herself. Didn't she have a pretty bad injury on yes. that one? Uh, I remember that it was uh, Deadpool 2 that a, a stunt woman died uh, during a stunt as well. Oh, not Maybe not during a stunt, but during prep for, in the In doing the job of being a stunt woman. Yeah, you, I imagine there's a lot of practice and rehearsal for that sort of thing. Well, I think that one was kind of, um, that one, there was some, uh, like, there were developments afterward about whether or not, like, how, how avoidable was that as a, as a thing, like, whether or not there was issues, uh, on set, but I can't, I can't remember the details, but yeah, these, these accidents happen, it's really, yeah, sad. SCP-055, the self-keeping secret, or the anti-meme? Uh, 055? Five five? What they said. That is an early one, and it's one that I've definitely read before. Um, let me check. Self secret. I think. Um, oh, I think, yeah, I remember this one. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these are really interesting. Um, this idea of some, something that can't quite. E it's it's similar, or maybe it's... I have to read it again just to be sure, but this was a long time ago, so it's, it's only 55. And at a time, I read through a shit ton of them. Um, but it's a it's an interesting concept, I think, that this... Uh, it, this is extremely highly rated uh, as far as the entries go. So I'll keep this open on another tab and reacquaint myself with it. But if it's the one that I think it is, then uh, it is a very interesting I, uh, interesting concept. How do you... How do you keep something contained safely when the nature of the thing is that knowing about the thing makes you forget about it? Um, so it's 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 neat. This is the kind of stuff that you could do with interesting like science fiction premises like the SCP stuff. There's bad guys in Doctor Who who, when you see them, uh, and the second you stop seeing them, you forget you saw them, and so you have to. The way they do it in the show is that people write down. It's kind of stupid thinking about it, but also used for fun payoffs that you'd write a tally mark so that you can tally how many times you've seen them on your arm without knowing. And so the way they do it, of course, is the characters doing their thing and then, like, you know, they turn around and they're 
not quite in a place they remembered being, and then they look at their arm and they've got like five tally marks, and like, oh fuck, the silence are here, and it's just like that's that's something. I just think that yeah. it could be even better than that. And plus, stuff like this is ripe for like lower budget kind of movies to make, where you don't ha if you just take a premise and don't worry about trying to explain the science of it or how it works or where it came from. But if you play straight the idea of those kinds of things, you can make some really fun stories that are really interesting. Yes. And a lot of them wouldn't necessarily take like a big budget. It just takes some creativity and, you know, good writing chops to, you know, yes. make it work. Um, every Transformers film besides Transformers 5 was under $210 million, by the way. Marvel is as over-bloated as the U.S. government. Also, high rags. Hello. I think that's pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, I think the Saw series should copy the trend of Five Nights at Freddy's and make Saw Eleven a spin-off, Spiral Pig versus Jigsaw Trial by Puppet. I'd pay good money to see that. <laughs> yeah, Trial by Puppet. <laughs> Be pretty cool. You undercook suits, also jail. I'm not sure what to do with that. Hmm. Not sure about that one. Uh, any of you heard of the amazing Digital Circus as new indie show which have received 66 million views with its excellent animation and, dare I say, good writing? Wait, what's it called? Was it the Amazing Circus? Uh, I've not oh, sorry, Amazing Digital Circus. No, haven't heard of that. Yeah, don't know what that is. Hmm. Intriguing. After serving a few tours with gay actor Michael Douglas, I can confirm he is a god-tier point man in RS2. Rain Rainbow Seed? Rainbow Six? Rainbow two? Six Two? <laughs> yeah, I assume gay actor Michael is Douglas Is that the would Vegas one? I don't know. Rainbow uh, Six Vegas? Well, I, I don't know if it's called... I'm, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, I don't know. It's just been Siege for so long at this point. Joe Rogan was 100% right about the trajectory of Marvel post-Endgame. To be fair, I think oh. um, it was always going to go down, but it, I don't think anybody could have predicted it would flatline. Like, Quick and spectacularly. Yeah, like, uh, I'll stand by it. Nobody predicted the Marvels even falling that far. That was, that was shocking. Um, and quick. Uh, but, you know, we, we tracked it as it happened, and I think uh, we turned... At Loki, a lot of people turned slightly older than that, but uh, it was it's not exactly... Uh, it seems so long ago now. Yeah. At this point, not even hiring directors of good films guarantees we'll get something good with Disney's track record. Sad to see the state of things, but glad that more and more are seeing the need for change. Also, hi, Fringy. Hi there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, th there has to be... It, it, the thing that needs to be drilled in, which I think is becoming pretty apparent to everybody at this point anyway, is that it's the way that these films are made that is essentially making it near impossible to deliver uh, quality, let alone consistently. Um, not entering into production with completed scripts, uh, doing massive amounts of reshoots, having like a very like not having everything figured out, not talking to each other about what other people are doing and and how that's contributing to future stories. Um, and yeah, getting people to write who've only written like one episode of television before like writing a whole television series and getting a full screenplay for a film. All of these sort of things put together just kind of culminates in a very unreliable and bad way of making movies that has to change if anything's going to change on that front, as well as better priorities by way of what what is success, what is good what uh what are we aiming for in terms of quality as a bar rather than I guess chasing like abstract ideas of what may or may not make the most money uh but as for whether anything changes it's kind of a it's kind of a different story we'll see hi gang love the content you've been pumping out lately i'm a little curious do you guys have any interest in the upcoming godzilla minus one movie uh yes and well, by now or i don't know actually yes they will have seen it by the time they hear us in this so yes Hooray. <laughs> yeah loved it uh it's a really good movie awesome uh, Ice Age Australian Mega Fauna of the Day, Maolania. Uh, what's hmm. the spelling of that? M E I O L A N I A.
ain't is never heard of like this a, before. A, a giant, it's a giant, like, tortoise. Or a giant turtle. God damn. Oh boy, he was big. Uh, well, yeah, the megafauna of, uh... Uh, the when did, uh... Hmm. When did it, when did it become extinct? Uh... I'm not sure. There, there, yeah, it's like megafauna that was on Australia and, uh... Oh, apparently most of them were found on a on an island in the Pacific. Uh, that's interesting. I've never heard of this one. Interesting. Nor have I. Marvel chose to ignore the strong comic book arcs and put the failed arcs on film. Why? Yeah. Who know. knows why some things get decided on like that? It's a it's bizarre. There were definitely better ways to do a lot of the things that they did, and they kind of hampered themselves anyway. I mean, it's 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 been a huge series of crazy nonsense decisions. Farewell yeah, and adieu to you, fair flea massives. Farewell and adieu to you, massives of fleam. I've seen that one every once in a while. I keep on coming in. I think it's from gay actor Michael Douglas, actually. Yeah. Least exciting thing you did in your real life? Hi, Rex. Uh, slept. <laughs> yeah, like, I have no idea what the least exciting thing That's I probably it, yeah. Is. I've probably forgotten about it at this point, but yeah, I guess sleeping. I don't, I don't know what else to say about that one. That just seems to be the correct answer. Yeah, I slept, and it's just, I'm not expecting anything crazy to happen when mm -hmm. I sleep. Um, you know, I admire the Roman proverb of you are not defeated until you accept death, but I feel there's a fine line between that and knowing when to cut your losses. Are we still in the denial stage of the five stages of grief, or have we moved on yet? Uh, uh like marble stuff? Or just as a general idea relating to that term. I assume they, they, they're asking that about something, right? Are we in the denial stage? Uh, I don't know if we're in denial anymore, broadly, right, about Marvel. I feel like we're pretty that. accepted on what we're getting from him. Yeah. What that means is, you know, that's kind of another thing. How are they going to respond to this adversity? Yes, um... But, I don't, I don't know, the saying itself, like, yeah, I mean, words of wisdom can often be pushed in one way or another, and that there's a balancing quote that takes you to the other side, or uh, dampens it, but I, I mean, you know, I, I think that they're talking about different things almost, right? Like, know when to cut your losses versus you, you've only truly lost when you accept death. There's, there's different vibes <laughs> with those quotes. Yeah. Um, everyone anticipating yeah. Deadpool... Is there anything else? I'm just here in agreement. I, <laughs> All no, right. No, yeah. I, I think it would be more appropriate to say you haven't lost until you've, like, given up. Or something like that, because sometimes, like, if you were to sacrifice yourself for a greater cause, that's accepting death. But I don't think I would, that doesn't make you a loser, you know. Um, everyone anticipating Deadpool needs to check their expectation. The fact that Disney can demolish the character and brand needs to be considered. Yeah, I agree. I, this, yeah, is, I mean, this is why the speculation on, you know, like a, a Mephisto or a Doctor Doom is kind of just like, well. Is that actually any yeah. different, or is it worse than bringing in some character you've never heard of? Mm -hmm. Or Thrawn. Remember all the anticipation for Thrawn <laughs> for so long? Uh. Uh, when are they going to get Enchantress in Thor or Loki movie? No. I mean... <laughs> I mean, hopefully, it would have to be a totally different Enchantress, right? That was the chick from uh, Suicide Squad, right? Yeah, but I mean, well, obviously, that's, DC. that's what I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's DC. Did you, did you, for a moment there, did you feel like they were sharing universe ranks? <laughs> that's why I, I was mean, confused. I, that's the only Enchantress I know. I didn't, I, I didn't know, like, the question was them being in a movie together, and I'm like, I don't know. I mean, like... They haven't done that know. yet, but I still feel like that's a, a thing they could do eventually, if they were desperate. Batman versus Captain America. Let's go. That Karen, would be interesting. Would it? With with these fuckers? <laughs> I don't know what we... <laughs> obviously, that's that's kind of my point, is that it's, uh, it's a desperation move because it's... Some of the mixes all go, ooh. Uh, Karen from SpongeBob, but it's Zolo's face. 
Who from SpongeBob? Sorry. Karen from SpongeBob, but it's Zolo's face. I I don't know who that is. I am lost on the reference myself. I mean SpongeBob. Yeah, I know who SpongeBob. Is. I mean Karen is who I don't. I don't. Who? Which one is Karen? I uh, I'm not the person to ask for SpongeBob references. I really did not watch a whole lot of SpongeBob. It's a bit of I a didn't coincidence. Either. I know the ones from. I. You know. I watched some, but not that much. I don't remember which one Karen is. I, uh, oh, oh wait, a, is that the dry, the big? Uh, no, that's Miss Puff. Um, it's a TV, apparently. Oh, a TV. Karen Plankton is one of the main characters in SpongeBob SquarePants, voiced by Jill oh. Taylor. She's a co-owner of the Chum Bucket Karen. alongside her husband Sheldon Plankton. She's a sentient computer who usually stationed at the Chum Bucket laboratory. Oh, I remember the one that. Oh, okay, yeah, because Plankton, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, now, now it's now. Okay. I okay. Oh, and yeah, they mean no, Zola, right. not Zolo. Zola, who was Zolo? Zola, uh, Zola being Zola was uh, from Winter Soldier. And yeah. No, that's Zola. Han Zola. No, I meant Zolo. Hanim Zola. Zola. <laughs> Who's Hans? Who's Hans? <laughs> Han Zolo. <right? laughs> from Hogan's Heroes. I would love to see him in the MC. <laughs> Braids are clearly belting. Uh, any chance you guys would do an EFAP movies for Tropic Thunder and or Galaxy Quest? Yes to both. Uh, I don't see why we wouldn't do them. Those could be real funny. Been watching Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It's an interesting alternative vision for the MCU, considering it came out just after Iron Man, but before Avengers. That's the animated series, right? Mm. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Nice one, Rags. Also high Rags. Nice. Thank you. EFAP on Cacassia when? We'll do an arc at some point. I'm not going to say exactly when, but we'll do it at some Cacassia? point. Cacassia? Yes. What's do you know that? what that is, Fringy? No. That is the first movie made by Doug Walker with the team behind Channel Awesome. The premise is that oh. they invade Cacassia? a house that belongs to someone who's technically not a part of America because of some kind of land shenanigans. Oh, like Pretoria from yes, uh, in, it's in just guy. that, and they call it Kickassia, and then the story is about how uh, Doug Walker is too like lame as a leader, and they all eventually leave. Oh, okay. Um, See, all I got is is that Melvin brother of the show. Yes, you've been brother given culture. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a coincidence, too. Uh, Mola, because of you, I watched Melvin, Brother of the Joker. That eight minutes of my life, I'm never getting back. Why did you do that? Melvin, Brother of the he Joker. He deserves more recognition. <laughs> Melvin was an incredible joke. It's the Joker, but goofy. Isn't that so awesome? But that's... Wait, the Joker, but goofy? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Also I can't imagine retarded. a version of the Joker that's goofy. Or retarded. <laughs> I want Rich Evans to win Junker. Yeah. Everyone wants to win Junker. I'd like to see Infinity War, Thanos return, kill Kang, and fix other things in the MCU. Yeah, you're not going to get that, though. I remember seeing an early draft of Doctor Strange MOM that was basically Mordo being the villain, Strange enlists the help of Doctor Doom, and they all end up fighting in Mephesto's realm. Thoughts? Uh, I guess that was before they decided. I mean, I got no thoughts really. I fucking hate that movie, so I don't <laughs> even care about what it was gonna be. <laughs> kind of. A little yeah, bit. Um, that's that's also so broad that like, you know, you could you could broadly describe the events of MOM and make it sound like it has potential. And make it sound exciting when it's terrible. Yeah. <sighs> By the way, hi ranks. Hi, Longman. Why did you say it as? Auntie and then aunt. I don't know. I don't remember what I was talking about. I, I, remember, I think it was you guys. I can't remember what the context was, but it was a conversation on which one of those terms was the one that you would use or was the one that Americans use, something like that. I've never used auntie. It's always been aunt. Uh, I feel like auntie is yeah. more common in Britain, but that you can use both. I would say uh, auntie and uncle are way, way, way more common in Australia. Yep, here it's uh, aunt and uncle. Kevin Feige's cap is Doris from Meet the Robinsons. Okay. Uh, Internet Historian put a disclaimer at the start of his new video asking React streamers to wait 48 hours before re-uploading their stream to YouTube. Thoughts? That's just evidence that it does that make puts... a difference. It's fair mm -hmm. enough to ask. It is totally fair to ask.
I wish more effort was put into stuff like that in terms of like, guys, can we all admit you are actually stealing shit and that it would be nice if you could at least let me have some of the algorithm before you chew it up. But uh, I don't know, it just takes more people being louder on it until it, differences are made. The, the truth is it takes more controversial reaches into stealing to actually make a difference for anything to actually change. I mean, if everyone, yeah, if everyone is reacting in a responsible way, then people wouldn't worry about having to make stuff like that. Well, at the same time, if people were reacting in an irresponsible slash steely way, but it was just slipping under the radar, then it nothing changes. But as soon as someone like an XQC or whoever yep. does like... Big guy doing the wrong thing and then trying to justify it because he's like a really seems to be a legitimately quite a bad person. So, yeah, well, all you do to you saying that is post his money. You'd be like, look at me. So, erect. Look at how expensive the watch is that I own. I'm wearing your house on my wrist. I got <laughs> him. <laughs> Dude, when he got on the ground and crawled around like a worm, I, can, I can't. It'll live I with you forever that, that moment, huh? In it, good way. It, it's so brilliant. Like, I'm, it is so, I'm so not mad that I'm going to get out of my chair and crawl around on the ground like a worm in silence off in the corner of the screen. That's how not mad I am. <laughs> oh, good times. He was so close. No. I'm not entirely sure what that refers to. Apologizing because of a Loki episode. Weak willed. Oh, I think that was the guy we covered where he went from saying Marvel has issues and then his following video he like apologized because oh. Loki episode was really good. Yeah. And also that uh, wasn't the Echo trailer was peak fire. <laughs> yes. Especially because it's oh, the next it's one. It's so different now that we've seen it. Jeez. Oh, yeah. What a what a lie <laughs> that trailer is. It. Oh, wow. God. What an empty show. That show is one of the most empty. I don't know if there's anything more empty than that. I think that's I think that's the most empty thing I've ever seen. And God said, "You shall cook atop the fiery peak." Well, I mean, if you know, if that's what God said. No wonder people keep using that. Marvel is a big grease fire, and Feige is pouring as much water on it as he can to put it out. Yeah, a little bit. In Resident Evil Retribution, I believe Jill shot the gun super weird to. St Simulate the old arcade game enemies. Not a good choice, lol. You didn't finish discussing after final chapter, but was Alice a Mary Sue? I think so, yeah. Um, I can't remember where, how far we got on that discussion, but I would assume yes. Um, she yeah, is she quite is liked. She's incredibly overpowered. Powerful. She usually solves all the problems. She's got barely any character going for her outside of that. It's weird that she's often cited as like an awesome action hero, and it's like, is, is that just because of the fact that there's so many of the movies? I mean, she's a she's lame. Yeah. Not awesome. Lame. Being an empty-headed consumer is so fire, bro. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Peak fire. Well, when okay. is the highlight reel of him saying fire and peak for die to the ten minutes coming? I don't know. We can only pray <laughs> that that's on the way. Uh, interesting take on Orphan Anne. Does that mean Orphan Annie? Orphan Annie is peak fire. Well, yeah, obviously. Wally 2, humans return to Earth, but Earth is invaded by aliens that enslave humanity. Their only hope lies with one little robot who must learn to kill in order to save the species he loves. Rated R. <laughs> 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 I like it. <laughs> Wally launching into battle with like an yeah. AK-47. Ewan McGregor in a cave with a box of scraps. That was our pitch for our vision of... Uh, that would have been, yeah, exactly. That would have been a way better version. Than much better. Did. It would so have been so much cheaper. We could have made it. But whatever his charging was, whatever the like tools of the crew yeah, we need to just record people, in the in yeah. the cave, and then yeah, like oh, ten million at most. That's probably what that would still fucking cost, to be honest with you. It'd probably still be more expensive than you think it should be. But I mean, it'd be it'd be way less of a gamble uh, yeah. than what they pardon me what they did. And man, couldn't it be cool if you just had Obi Wan sitting in the cave, trying to like go on a spiritual journey? 
and then it brings and hey you can bring in Liam Neeson as well you know you can have an episode that's just those two talking to each other about life yeah it could doesn't that sound way more interesting than the stupid show uh, oh well it was oh, a well, small well, loan of got... 90 million dollars what was, what was the budget for 90 million that we would have was it Loki? Oh, and, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi cost $90 million. Oh, right, okay. Andor has pretentious themes, quote-unquote. It also has stormtroopers who can aim. Funny that. <gasps> That's a radical idea. Yeah. I wonder if it'll pan you out. You can't possibly tell it's a Star Wars movie with that. I just can't. That's just well, mad. Incompetent Imperial officers. Here's a penny for you guys. Hi, Rags. Hello, thank you. Thank you yeah. for your penny. Sorry I can't give more. That is absolutely okay, and we That's appreciate right. any and all from you folks. Every penny that we get. It goes towards more fleemage. Uh, Mola, can you do an unbridled rage on this D-bag, please? No. <laughs> no. The Peak Fire bro, he's just gonna go ahead and keep calling things Peak Fire, and that's okay. Yeah, I'm just- I'm glad he's having fun over there with all of his things yeah. and stuff in his Peak Fire. Is he excited for Madam Web? Oh, you know yeah. it, bro. Did you see not, that trailer? That, yeah, but that's Sony, so maybe he hates Sony Marvel movies, maybe, even though yeah. they're as bad. If anything, they're a little bit better, <laughs> in a sense. At least Venom. Like, that's probably, you know, that's like a 3 out of 10. That <laughs> puts it above most uh, MCU stuff now. Do you think he was really pleased with Echo when he watched oh, it? Oh, apparently he wasn't. Someone uh, did share a tweet from him saying that uh, he was wrong to think it was going to be Peak Fire. Wow. <laughs> Okay. The commercial I'm, I'm, misled I'm me. Sure when he, yeah, I'm sure that when he sees a commercial <laughs> for Deadpool 3, he'll be like, oh my god, this is peak fire, bro. Well, yeah. That's the cycle. And then I guess he'll have to... He'll have Echo to is ice cold. Tony. Well, I guess that's the thing, is he'll have to tide himself over because there's no DC things except for, I think, Creature Commandos, which probably yeah. doesn't care about because it's animated. Well, maybe, I should, maybe, maybe he does. I don't know, actually. But... <laughs> There's no, there's no big major like DC projects. There's only Deadpool three, uh, and then there's the the Sony Marvel movies. So those will have to do, you know, Craven and stuff. Saw this video yesterday, and it's a roller coaster. About fifty percent of the time, he hits fifty percent of the targets. He's a little clown boy. Greetings, Rags. Greetings. Well, not bad ratio, right? He's hitting like fifty percent, fifty percent of the time. Is that he's got twenty five percent of the targets then, right? As far as it's I okay. know, I mean, that's yeah. not. Mm. <laughs> it's acceptable. <laughs> uh, how does a higher budget make that hide layer in my oversized coat part make more sense? None of the problems of that show would be fixed with money. No, that's true. It's not money was not the problem for uh, Kenobi, though he. Because it's all about the Star Wars theory quote. He's gone on to say he he very much wanted to focus on what he meant was that they clearly gave more investment. Just the money is representative of their investment, which. I don't even know that I agree with that. I feel like they don't care about any of these projects. Be sure, it make them Marvel like or care. yeah, like you know. It's... Um, Dave Filoni did give Star Wars Lizzo. He did. Thank goodness. No, Dave Filoni. He's gonna save Star Wars, guys. Sure is. Haven't you seen that one thing that he did that was good or whatever? Uh, yeah, that one. I've seen it. Mm, maybe. Uh, have you guys seen the clip of Sam Witwer telling a story about how Filoni doesn't care about consistent writing? The quote is that Dave Filoni said that you can have inconsistencies because it's really just a matter of different people telling different stories, and that's how you should interpret each, like, installment to Star Wars. That so. sounds like a really convenient rule to have if you're a <laughs> shitty hack writer. It sure it just is. Just an observation. It's just, it seems like a really convenient rule to have. And I think this is regarding uh, a lightsaber color being wrong. And, and he was like, yeah, it's just about, you know, interpretation, bro. Disney robbed us of Battlefront 3. We could have had the trilogy of games, but instead we got Battlefront EA. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, Not a highly regarded experience. No. Finally catching you live. Hi, Rags, and the rest. Hello. Hello. Apart from kart races, what are some of your favorite racing games? Aside from kart races, uh, I've been out Need three. Speed most wanted the uh, the old one. Yeah, Burnout's really cool. Uh, I don't really play like, many racing games, honestly. I like uh, Forza Horizon. I played two. I really like that game. 
Um, as you can tell, arcade racing games are the ones that I like. I'm not... I played Gran Turismo, but it's not its not really my thing, like, the, the hyper, I guess, well, trying to be more realistic, like, racing simulator games. I like the arcade ones, like, street racing, you know, getting into chasing the cops and stuff. I, him, it seems it's hit and run as a kart racing game, so that'd be another one that's in the mix. Do you ever play Split Second on 360? I am no. not. Remember when that came out of the trailer, that was pretty cool. I'm trying to remember what the gimmick was in that game. I think it was something to do with time, but, um... Yeah, it's oh, hard to remember all my driver? racing games. Oh, I played Rally. Remember the driver game? Rally games on PC. Uh, yeah, Ridge Race there. Oh, and Wave oh. Race. I played a shit ton of Wave Race as well. And and uh, Wipeout's pretty cool. Uh, I've played a decent number of racing games, but it's just and F Zero. But like, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. I'm, it's not really sim games. It's uh, the arcade racing games with like where it's like not realistic physics, chases with police, like street racing stuff like that. Um, did you you guys have played Crash Team Racing though, right? You no. Have, or... What about you, Rags? You played Crash Team Racing? I have not. I haven't played many racing games. I've played some of the Mario Karts. Um, the Nintendo DS Mario Kart I really particularly enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, having yeah. having that on the go was a really fun thing. Um, I guess uh, the reason why I ask about Crash Team Racing is because um. I love Mario Kart, but Crash Team Racing, in terms of its core mechanics, is the superior kart racing game. It's uh, Damn. it's got a lot of like little aspects to it's. It's just it's a it's a game that's got a higher. I don't want to say because Mario Kart has a surprisingly high skill ceiling, um, especially when it's played at, at a more competitive level. Uh, it's 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 not a simple game. Uh, there's something about the core Crash Team Racing mechanics that's super cool, though. Especially like the drifting. It's just it's not as uh, it's not as easy inherently. There's a certain amount of like timing that has to go into it. Some uh, fun ways to play around with the physics in the original version, anyway. Uh, and it had really cool weapons and tracks. It's a, it's a really really great racing game. The extinct animal of the day is the. Ah, uh, Archotherium angustidens is a big bear. Oh, here he is doing doing his bear thing. Oh wow, he is a big bear. Maybe. Oh yeah, look at him. He's very bear-like. He's got very long appendages. He would, very long yeah. arms yeah, and yeah. legs, high up off the ground. Hopefully, he's friendly. Apparently, he's called Bearzilla. I believe it. Uh, the Empire is never more alive than when we sleep. I assume that's an Andor quote, right? That's I an Andor so. quote. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, Marva says that. Uh, she says if she could do it all again, she'd wake up early and be fighting these bastards from the start. And he says <sighs> it with such emotion as well. I, uh, I think... Um, Ah oh, man, I was about to say which one's my favorite. That's like I think I think Luthen's is my favorite. It's hard to uh, beat that one. Monologue. That one's pretty. That one truly is peak fire. I and, share uh, my dreams but, with but, ghosts. Damn. Yeah, that's right. Um, and but I mean, Kino Loy's and and Marvis are really great as well. And Nemix Manifesto is a bit uh, underrated, I'd say. That's mm -hmm. a really cool one. Something that's really cool about it is that um, the last thing he says is try. Which feels interesting, given that, uh, you know, one of the more iconic quotes from Star Wars is, do or do not, there is no try. That, like, essentially his big point is, try, just try, even if you don't succeed. Which I guess, it's it's just interesting. I suppose, you it to, you know, it's quote. like a development of, do or do not, however, if you choose do not, then at least try. <laughs> you know, exactly, it's like, it's like But you said there is no try, and it's like, listen, if you're choosing the bad one, then try it. Well, and especially because the broad point that he's making is his his whole point during this the uh the 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 speech is that every act of resistance ultimately matters, even if it seems futile, because it's it's all it all accumulates like uh like water is sort of beginning to to flood the banks of the empire until there's one one event, one single thing. Obviously, in this case, it's the destruction of the Death Star, right? The big thing that kind of changes everything forever that every small act of resistance matters so to even try is to succeed even even you know even if it doesn't apparently do anything which of course is really good to hear right before 
all of the, the, the people on Ferex do their rebellion that is obviously suppressed. Um, to sort of highlight that it's like, no, don't, don't believe that this didn't matter. This matters. Um, just because they didn't win, which wasn't really on the cards anyway, this, uh, this matters. And or, if you haven't seen it, mm -hmm. you need to you watch it. You really should. And the last Super Chat, uh, I, huh? miss, I miss the time where you read Super Chats live. Well, we're still not caught up yet, so if we do manage to catch up on not just Super Chats, but also the other projects we're uh, doing, maybe, if we're, we're willing to do longer episodes, we'll read them live. But the thing is, when you read Super Chats live, and this is something the drinker learned pretty quickly, you get more, and then you can't catch up. And it ruins the whole thing. So if you do them offline, there's a definitive ending, and then you can complete it and label it correctly so people can find their messages. And then everybody who sent stuff in gets answered. It's called efficiency. But if we were to some nights be like, hey, we can go for another five hours, <laughs> we continue doing it, uh, super check catch up sort of thing. Um, but I mean, you know, it, everything is still uh, accessible and everything. I just want to make sure everything's. Everything's done, which has become more difficult as time goes on, but we shall get there. I'm sure of it. I mean, speaking of which, that's another Super Chat catch-up completed. Hope you guys Hooray. got the answers you were looking for, and uh, yeah. we appreciate the kind donations and the messages, but for now, we're going to leave you with the whatever yeah, you're up everybody. to in your day. I hope you have a good day or night whenever you get to, whenever you get to listen to this. And yeah. thank you again for all the super chats. We really, really appreciate it. It's what helps keep us going. We do indeed. But for now, goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. We will see you see later. Everybody, bye, bye.